Casper Vision. But I won't watch it myself because I never watch myself. Oh, really? What? No, I can't stand my voice. Can't. Oh, what? Gross. Is Even that? In the corner of your things, making me want to gag. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> you look good, Yvette. You look good. <laughs> You know what's oh. you know what's crazy, Yvette, is I've been watching we both of us, we watched you when we were young, like twenty years ago, we used to I loved Most Haunted. Yeah. Do it, mate. Yeah. I just Matt, I can't believe that I'm sat here in a podcast talking to you. I think it's absolutely amazing. Be because we've carried on chatting, I'm just gonna say, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Casper Vision. <laughs> this is Yvette <laughs> Yvette Fielding. Um, you know, absolute legend. Like also what we have to say as well, you were the youngest ever um a host for blue peter right yeah that's at right, 18 yeah. yes that's incredible what a gig hey i oh. know imagine getting that at 18 oh blue I peter know. I, I know and you know it, it was in 1987 i did it to 92 and in 87 there were only four tv channels um and i uh, remember like, yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember when Channel Five came out. It was like, we oh, got another go channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so good. I yeah, I, yeah. So it was a it was a huge deal. And whenever there was a new Blue Peter presenter back in those days, oh my God, it was all over the front pages of the newspapers. Yeah. You know, who's the new Blue Peter presenter? And I'd never been away from home before. I'd, I'd sort of. It was just me and my mum and my brother. My dad was living in America, but I'd, I'd never visited America, never been away from home. And um, they said, right, well, we're just going to send you off to Russia for six weeks. Uh, what? what? So I was flown out to Russia on Aeroflot. And let me tell you, if you've never flown Aeroflot, don't bother. <laughs> just, um, the, just, the, the, just the name, Aeroflot. Oh, yeah, Aeroflot. It was the yeah. experience I think I've ever, ever had. I always remember the um, hostess trolley coming round, and it was what like a trolley that your grandma used to have. You know, it's like a gold <laughs> ting, 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 trolley. Ting, ting. <laughs> it was, and they had the duty-free goods were like some plastic beads and some dolls. And then they said, and you drink, and they were plastic cups, but they still had teeth marked around them from when they oh, picked you. No, no way. What? And I was like, oh, yes, please, that would be lovely. Anyway, um, we actually did land after various um, dodges, and I, I won't bore you with all of that, but my God, talk about losing one's hair i did on that flight <laughs> got to russia and let me tell you it was the most eye-opening experience i've ever ever had in my life um and then um got back put into a hotel in chiswick um and left alone and what? i didn't know anybody i had at the no age friends. of 18 uh, yeah just 18 what and was I you was doing in russia at that Film so that every year on Blue Peter, I don't know if you remember, they used to do a thing called the Summer Expedition. So it was oh, where right. yeah, that rings the bell. And yeah, they'd film for six weeks and we'd, we'd go to different countries. So Russia was my first taste of that, right? And uh, yeah, so the first, so that first year, I hated it. I actually left, I walked out the studio because I was so. I used to vomit before yeah. each yeah. I used to vomit before each show, and and then two minutes to on air. This, this was before autocue or earpieces, and the editor at the time was a lady called Biddy Baxter, and uh, <laughs> Biddy yeah, Baxter, Biddy Baxter, and you had you had and bless her, she had one eye that went that way and one eye that went the other way. <laughs> what? What did you say? <laughs> You're talking to me. <laughs> And this massive cleavage, and I never really knew where to look. It was just, <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, oh. so she used to come tripping down the steps, literally two minutes to on air. And you learned, no water cue, remember? You'd learned like your piece was. I remember this specifically. It was something like Henry the Eighth and all his wives, and it was you had to get all your camera shots right and all this kind of. Thing. She put a red line right through mine and gone, darling. I've rewritten it. Hurry up and learn it. Well, oh, talk about oh growing up God. and all the rest. Of it. And that red light came on, and I would just freeze. Oh, and shit. it was lovely Mark <laughs> Curry, who I was presenting with, said, um, "Listen, you know, we're the only show not to have." Autocue, come on, Yvette's really struggling here. It yeah. would really help. So Autocue was was brought in to Blue Peter because of me. Oh, there you go, brilliant. And I was taken to John Craven's news round, the studio, and John Craven taught me how to read Autocue. And I was like, oh my God, John Craven. Okay, John so, <laughs> so, I mean, forgive me, but how is there a way of, how do you learn to read Autocue? 
I mean, doesn't it just well, you, scroll and then somebody slows it but down when you're slowing down and that's right. But but basically if you don't there's a there's a there's like a marker on the side of the screen and you're to keep your eyes at that level. Oh. And you can always tell that people who uh, when you watch who are they're not doing it correctly because they'll read above the line or below the line and you'll see their eyes going that you'll see them reading oh, right and, yeah, then, yeah. and the secret is to it is not to see your eyes that's right yeah nice yeah wow so how did you uh get into that industry you know at the age of 18 you got this job like the biggest job of you know i suppose like you say at the time it was just huge mm. everyone knew about it everyone watched it how did you what did you have to do to prepare to get that role well i'd i'd gone to um theatre school um in cheshire and uh i'd got a part there for a bbc drama called sea view and yes sadly it is on youtube and my god my acting is not acting really it's so bad it's <laughs> Awful. And I, I, I don't Come watch on myself. now, I bet it's not. I bet it's not. No, that, bad. that little really... impression that you did earlier, that's a sign of somebody who can act. <laughs> this is my impression. What's that coming down the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't eat that dinner now. No. That's how bad it was. Anyway, so I did that for two series and um and Biddy Baxter to see me on that apparently oh, really? and kept me in mind for when I, yeah and I was only 14 when I did that and apparently she kept me in mind right. all that time but the first audition I went to for, for, for Blue Peter I didn't get Karen Keating got that the beautiful Karen and then I got it the second time but the worst thing was is I forgot my leotard and um and my friend had come with me who wore a, a bright pair of orange woolen tights and part of the audition is to do a trampoline session and this trampoline's massive it's off and i'm not a very big person i'm not at all yeah. anyway mm -hmm. so biddy said well darling just take your skirt off my mother had, had insisted in dressing me like valerie singleton <laughs> so i had the long a-line woolen skirt cowl neck sweater every just covering everything and I <laughs> And then anyway, I went in there and, and then they said, just drop your skirt, drop your skirt and get on the trampoline. <laughs> so I had to, I had to oh, stick God. to my pencil. And these orange voluminous woolen tights were there for everybody to see. Well, could I get on this bloody trampoline? Could I hell? My big fat backside was there lunging back and forth <laughs> trying to get onto this trampoline. Oh. Anyway, I got... <laughs> Yeah, you got the job. <laughs> yes, wow. definitely. I remember you. I was like eight or nine when I used to watch you when Did I you first watch? saw you. Yeah. Did you say you left at uh, in ninety two? Good memory. Yeah, ninety two. I left. Yeah, and I went on to ITV. So I sort of. I did a naughty and flipped sides. And in those days, that was a, oh, yeah. how dare you leave BBC and go to yeah. ITV. But I went to ITV and I did um, a couple of years of a series called What's Up Doc, which was another children's Saturday morning show right. where they showed Warner Brothers, all the Warner Brothers cartoons. It was me and Pat Sharp. Yeah, and Pat Andy Sharp Crane. from Funhouse. Oh, Funhouse. Yeah, Funhouse. That mate. top, that, that. And that, the that, twins. Yeah, Remember mate. the twins? Yeah. I used to like and them. And his haircut. Yeah. His haircut. And oh, yeah, the mullet. twins. Yeah, 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 yeah. The mullet, man. Yeah, he's some hair. And such a lovely, 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 lovely man. Oh, my God, we had such a laugh doing that show. But it was the first time that I was I was allowed, I suppose it's when my writing started coming in, because on Blue Peter, I was never really allowed to be a part of the creative yeah. side of things. You just had your just... job, you did your job well, and you went home. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Um, so uh, this time it was like, right, okay, well, what, what would you like to do here? And then... So then I was involved with the yeah. creative side in it. And oh my God, I absolutely loved it. I, I, it was absolutely fantastic. And then sadly, um, that show ended, I think Scottish Television bought it and then changed a load of stuff after three years, right. which is a real shame. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah. And then I, I, I sort of did various other jobs for different stations and I've always been very lucky. Yeah. And then I met my beautiful husband. Who's that, um, Carl? That's Carl. He was a cameraman. I went back to the BBC. He was a cameraman. What, they took and you I'm, back? They did. I know. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, I, I, I was presenting a show called City Hospital, 
for BBC One and it was in the mornings and it was every single day, five days a week, and we'd come live from a hospital. So it was great because we got access to surgeries, births. I mean, wow. I saw everything. I saw a real hip operation and joined in and oh, held wow. them. And saw oh. Zen, nearly fainted. Marvellous. But then in walked this sexy beast of a cameraman. And I was like, oh, my God, who is that? And I was going, oh, but he's so gorgeous. He's so sexy and fabulous. And I said to the production team, please, can you make sure that all my little bits that we film throughout the week, can he be my cameraman? And they were going, no, we can't guarantee that. And apparently they went up to him and said, please, Yvette, will you do some, please, Carl, will you do something about Yvette? He said, oh, my God, what have I done wrong? No, no, no. Will you ask her out? She's driving us all mental. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he asked me out and uh, I thought, I kept saying to him, are you sure you're not under duress? Are you sure you don't feel obligated to take me out for dinner? I was, I was I expecting think... you to say then, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, something again. similar did happen. He said to me, what was it? He said, oh, I, uh, we, were, we were fixing and some other couple were going out or something. And he said, oh, he said, I think, uh, I think I might ask you out for dinner. And I just turned to him and I just went, I don't think you could handle me. Thinking, oh, that'll make him go. Oh, I'm going to chase her. But no, he did exactly the opposite. Yeah. He went, all right. Then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, oh, then. Wow. So, yeah. Eventually, we, we, he asked me out, and uh, three months later, we were engaged. And he asked me on the telly, live on air. Oh, on wow. Yeah. Awesome. Got down on his knee in a blooming surgical live. suite. With the bed and the, yeah, live. So you, saw, live you, had to, you had to say yes then, really, didn't you? It was live. <laughs> well, I didn't have a and there, I always remember the ambulance man standing there with the ukulele playing You Send Me by Sam Cooke. I was like, oh, my God, it's like a with, weird dream. With a ukulele. That's wicked. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Oh man! And then we've been. How long we've been married now? Twenty-three years. We've been happily, happily married, oh, and we work together. And you know, he is just the bestest thing that has ever happened to me in wow. the whole of my life. Wow. And we See, laugh. That's also laugh. that's also amazing as well because sometimes um, you know working together. I think from what I've heard can be quite a stressful thing. You know where you. you you, you finish work and you want to shut off, but then you, you can't because you're working with the people that you're living with, you, you know? But clearly, obviously, it works for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it has done. I think I think for us, it was just respecting each other. So, yeah. you know, if he said something that I didn't agree with, I wouldn't instantly, you know, snap. I'd, I'd actually go away and think about it and think, okay, well, let's see it from his point of view. And then he, vice versa. Yeah, so yeah. he would think the same. And um, at the end of the night, we would just come home and just wouldn't even talk about work. We'd, yeah. we'd, we'd you know, watch a movie or something. And it, well, it seems to have worked. We still work together <laughs> yeah. now. You know? Yeah. So and was he like your own private, like personal cameraman then? He, he must be like, I've got a recorder again. He's yeah. seeing you all day at work <laughs> and then seeing you at home. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's rather fabulous. We had some. We had. Um, oh, Sorry, yeah. The no, Daily no. Mirror came to the to the house. We've had some journalists because I'm very, very keen. Um, it, it's very important to me that uh, anything paranormal that we film, that I want to invite more and more journalists and scientists on board because I know for a fact that there are lots of paranormal shows out there. Not all of them, mm. not all of them, but a lot of paranormal TV shows aren't what they seem. Yeah. And most ones are sometimes a lot of people will put that in the same bracket. Yeah. And so it's very important for me and for Carl that we invite journalists and scientists to watch us film. Yeah. And even we invited them to our home to do a seance and all the rest of it. And um, we just did one recently, which was lovely with the Daily Mirror. And it blew them away what happened. It was just so fantastic. But I'm very passionate about that. And we also started Most Haunted Experience. And we're the only paranormal TV show that I know of in the world that has actually set up a um, uh, an events um, company where you can choose anywhere in the UK, uh, any haunted location and come and join the Most Haunted Team, myself, the Most Haunted Team. I heard about this. Up. Yeah, I heard yeah. about this the other day. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you, get, you so, get, even get so kids important. there, don't you, as well? Teenagers with their parents come along and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so we do under 16 ones. We don't do too many of those because we haven't had time, but the, the main ones, they happen every single weekend. 
And it's amazing the amount of people that have come along and gone, oh my God, it's real. The yeah. knocking, the tipping phenomena, the table tipping, all of that. The, the table the, the tipping. Eat. Yeah, man. Yeah. We, what? They, they do. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm gone. <laughs> A vet, a vet does Ouija boards and everything. Oh mate. no, no. Okay, never, that's one thing I so, never do. Yeah, like, man. Okay, I need. I, I think I need to go back a, a little bit because when um, when Most Haunted came out in the UK, it was like a landslide. I think it just it just uh, maybe even the, the first episode, it was just like boom, and everyone was talking about it. Everybody was watching it. You know. And it was the first, wasn't it? It, it was yeah. the first big paranoia. That's how it all started, man. Absolutely. It's when people really started going, you know, is is this real? Is this, you know, yeah. um, going out doing their own investigations and things like that. But I want to, because I think most people tuned in now will recognize you because of, you know, most haunted. Yeah. You know? And... I want to talk to you a, a little bit about that because you must have experienced so many you know, and have so many different stories about the, the, I mean, how many episodes and seasons were there? Oh, oh my God. Well, we're still going now. Um, mm. I, I think it's something like, I don't know. Carl will know. Are you still I doing them now on YouTube a bit? You do, yeah, yeah, you're doing yeah. them on YouTube, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's something like 26, 26 series. Wow. That's insane. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, we just celebrated the beginning of this year, 20 years of 20 most years. Wow. Wow. Um, so there must be a few hundred, I mean, a few hundred investigations you've done there. Yeah. It's got to oh, thousands. Two, thousands. Thousands. Yeah. thousands, thousands, thousands <clears throat> and and it, yes. But, so, so the question, it, I suppose, before getting into that, um, have you always been in like in, intrigued with the paranormal? Have always been into it, you know, sort of wanting to know more about the paranormal or is it was it then you you started questioning things when you started getting that role for you know most haunted i i was always intrigued with it i mean you guys are too young but there used to be a program called strange but true oh i, I remember I remember, I remember strange, I remember but, strange true. but true <laughs> yeah that was amazing he always used to say at the end strange but true yeah Who, yeah was it? the the what the was the guy called blonde haired fair hair that's it yeah yeah that's it was it. amazing and like, the it, setup it, as well he was, it was in that um he was usually like, like a thing. yeah 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 it was amazing and so, such fantastic stories yeah and and I, I i i would love to bring that back I mean, because mm. we haven't got anything like that, but we've got so many channels now anyway, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. But yeah, so there was Strange But True. But even before that, when I was younger, now you definitely won't remember this guy. You might have heard of him, Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World. No. Um, and yeah, have a look at some of the stuff on YouTube. Um, but he would <clears throat> he would go off and investigate all around the world, all these really weird and wonderful stories, paranormal, mm. strange and weird things, you know. And I love that. And I always remember my mum, she got the Arthur C. Clarke Mysterious World magazine. And inside mm -hmm. it, there was like a, it was like a vinyl uh, 45, a record, but it was floppy, like a, yeah. like a plastic throwaway one. Yeah. And it was said on it, Voices from the Dead. And my mum put it on the record player and I must have been about five years old, but my mum's <laughs> no. very young. She, she had me when she was 18. So there she was, sort of a bit naive. And oh, what's this? Puts it on. And well, she, honestly, a pair of us were like cowering in the corner of the room. <laughs> yeah. As you were like, <laughs> going on like this. Oh, <laughs> Christ. You know, and, uh, yeah. So she ripped it off and threw it in the bin. <gasps> oh, oh. But she was always fascinated with it. And uh, yeah, so that was really it for me. Arthur C. Clarke and Strange But True. And I loved it. But I was also scared of it at the same time. Yeah. So I'd watch Strange But True and it would be about, I don't know, the Enfield Poltergeist or something. And then that night I'd be shaking under the sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. Something. That's, yeah, probably, so that's probably what, um, uh, I don't know, I think it was before we started press and record, but that's probably what scarred you for watching horror movies. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Because before beforehand you were saying about that you don't which it totally like I can't believe throws that. me sideways that you don't watch horror movies. You know? Why don't you? I no, I I can't watch anything like that or or read or listen to anything like that because 
if I was to then go and investigate um, a property, um, private or perhaps a bigger property like an old school or something like that, and a murder has been committed, let's just say off the top of my head in the attic, yeah. and I have to go up there on my own. And, you know, at the weekend I'd watch The Conjuring. Yeah. What would happen is that my head would be so messed up with images. Mm. And so I try not to, it, I mean, I'm scared enough as it is, but if you watch stuff like that, the Holly, the way Hollywood have made it, I mean, you know that The Conjuring is based on real paranormal. Yeah, yeah, paranormal yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the weird thing is the clip that I saw recently was she goes down into the cellar. And this has happened to me so many times. And all of a sudden that ball is thrown at her. And I'm, I'm going, this happened to me, this happened to me in excitement. And the people that I'm with are going, F off. Oh my God, I can't believe you're saying that to us. How, how are you still staying in the cellar? And I was like, I have no idea. I was rooted to the spot with abject terror. Yeah. And that's the thing is that this is what I could say. Oh, believe that, me, we, I, I remember seeing you have sheer terror on your face on yeah, the yell knees. Definitely. Oh, yeah. and, and, and so it is, it's 100% real. And that's what annoys me when, Ofcom have to put on the TV show, which we don't have to, thank God, anymore on YouTube. This is for entertainment purposes only. But they have to do that on all paranormal shows. Yeah. And it's an Ofcom why? regulation. Um, I don't actually know the reason why. I think it has to do with um, uh, many, many years ago, the BBC did a program called Ghost Watch. And it had oh, so my God. Shit, <laughs> now don't say that word. <laughs> that that God messed me. me. Um, yeah. yeah. My. I tell you, I'm sorry to detour, but you said that. With pipes. And I was shaking. And I don't know why my mum let us all kids watch it. <laughs> we were shaking that much. My mum had to phone the BBC and ask to see if it was real. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, Ben, don't. But kids, it's, it's <laughs> fake. It's fine. It's fake. <laughs> oh, my God. Mate, there, I remember the, there's a clip of a little girl and she, and she was banging. There was, there was pipes, weren't there? It was Mr. Called, pipes. Mr. Pipes. She yeah. was banging on the pipes. And then the video went to the little girl and she was hiding in the wall, banging the pipes. Yeah. I remember that clip so vivid, yeah. mate. And she was oh like, I God, just wanted that? you to believe us. I wanted you to believe. Yeah. I was like, mate, it scarred me that. Oh my, well, that, I don't know if you know, as your mum did, they had so many complaints. Yeah. But also a gentleman, <laughs> yeah, a gentleman killed himself because he thought it was real and it, oh it messed God. with him so much. Now, the BBC has never, ever done a show like that yeah. since. Yeah, obviously. And, and, and I think that's why they put Ofcom is one of the reasons anyway. I think another reason is because um, to do with the church, to do with religion, right. to do with all okay. sorts of... But they they, they a, have to be very careful. Yeah, it is a quite a, a psychological game that you know, you, you, you're tapping into your four people, yeah. you know, especially that, yeah, I mean, because there's some people out there that want to believe and there's some people out there that don't want to believe. Well, the, my, I, I, honest to God, I honestly think there, and this is going to sound crazy, but I honestly believe that there's something against Most Haunted because it's almost like we're saying to everybody, it's real. Mm. We've set up Most Haunted experience. It's real. We're inviting the press along. It's real. Yeah. Scientists shun it. They don't. They think, oh well, it's a TV. Forget it. Um, I'm wondering if is it? They, do they not want to show it on BBC broadcasting stations because it's real? Mm. Because it's will frighten people. Are they only showing paranormal shows because they can put the banner with this is for entertainment purposes only? And yeah. they don't want to put most content on there because I'm saying constantly to the press, come along, it's real, it's real, it's real. Yeah. Do they not want that? That's what I'm thinking. That's my, because there's no other other reason why Most Wanted is not on um, television. It has to be on YouTube because yeah. then we can have our own rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the problem is with this day <clears throat> and age now, nobody, like you could have, especially if it's on a television, if it's on a television, anything can be faked nowadays and that i think yeah. that's the problem with what people can't get around you know a ball flying across the room oh that could be a trigger you know just type you yeah, know, just yeah. click a trigger boom you know anything and that must be really frustrating for people like you who are trying to go out there and prove the point you know it is fucking real <laughs> yeah. I know, it is, well it, you're absolutely right 100 percent 
and it and it, it it's it, it is incredibly frustrating and hence me going back to that's why we set up the event all the other paranormal shows do it because if you're <clears> real and it's it, then you can you, you haven't got anything to hide. There's mm. nothing to hide. Yeah. So go go. I encourage everybody. If you really believe in what you're doing, yeah. Then you go out and you share that with as many people as possible. Mm. Show them that it's real, and that's what I want to do. And absolutely right. If I was watching Most Haunted, and I wasn't in television, straight away I'd say, "Well, that's fake. Mm. That's fake." Somebody could have thrown that. Somebody could have done that. Yeah. And I get it <clears> because <throat> we haven't got enough cameras. You think of every yeah. single yeah, yeah, to show everything. Like, yeah, you have it, and then not only that, but you've got to sit in that edit and watch. You're filming for twelve hours. You're, those cameras are rolling. We don't oh yeah, when power. when when we edit our ghost hunts, we've got like six cameras, and that is a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you imagine, oh my god! And so people say, oh god, you know, you didn't cover this. You didn't. It, I, I totally <laughs> not enough hours it. in the day. Absolute yeah. frustration. I totally, totally get that. And I, 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 if I was watching it, I would think exactly the same. Mm. But, the, but I know it's it, it, it's real, and I know that it's my absolute passion beyond belief because yeah. everything that I have seen, everything that I have witnessed, I know for a fact, one hundred percent, that there is life after death, yeah. and that we do go on, and that you will see your loved ones again. I have That's great nice. conversations with my dad. Yeah. My dad on nearly to honest to God, 20 years. You know the tapping and the knocking that we get. Yeah. So I'll point to letters. I'll say, Have you got a message for me today, Dad? And he'll and I'll, I'll point to the letters. And um uh I was dieting I, and he put stop, skinny cow. So <laughs> and, and then I, and then I asked him because he loved Clint Eastwood and I was watching a Clint Eastwood documentary and I said did you like the Clint Eastwood doc documentary and he tapped twice for yes I know this sounds crazy but it's flipping true no way uh, yeah and uh, and I said well what do you want to watch next Sunday and he tapped out the T H E M A G I'm thinking where's this going he tapped out the Magnificent Seven well I've never seen that bloody movie. What? And and, I, and then Carl went, what the the new one or the original? And he spelled out original, um, and and it was just like, what the hell? And then it was, um, then it was, what was the first Magnum Force? Then it was, um, it was all the <laughs> Eastwood movies. In I order. think he must be hanging out in the spirit world of blockbusters or something. No I'm way. I'm telling you, that's, they can see what we see, they can hear what we hear. If you want, if you know, if your loved one had a favorite record put the bloody thing on and yeah. dance around they love it they can see you they can hear you <laughs> so honest to god what, I, it's so it's so comforting well it, it sounds amazing but like why do you think they are i mean are they in this sort of i suppose plane are they like are they communicate how are they communicating like and what what do you think happens does your spirit go away, but some stay around and linger, or do you go to heaven? What What's your theory on it all? Well, I've been told by the other side via this knocking and tapping method. Some questions answer. So some like, is there a God? Nothing. You won't get any answers. It took me a long time to get an answer about um, reincarnation. Uh, does reincarnation exist? And I kept asking and asking <clears> this <throat> question, and it. Weirdly enough, it came from uh, a gentleman we were investigating Belgrave Hall, and uh, he said, yes. And I said, oh, I said, but you're here. And he said, yes, um, family. And I said, oh, I said, so do you still see this house as it was when you lived here? And he lived there in the 1800s, and he said, yes. Um, and he was with his family, so he didn't want to reincarnate, but he was the first spirit as it were to come through and actually acknowledge that reincarnation existed so what we think about from the way we are as human beings is we think very linear don't we we yeah. think you know here's me here's you we all live in this one life and then when we die we go to heaven and there's a hell possibly yeah, 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 yeah. Depending on faith. but apparently according to the other side yes you your soul does travel it travels to another plane but that plane is like we're divided by a very thin, like a gossamer. It's very, very thin. And you can be, this This is crazy, but you can be in uh, lots of different places all at the same time. Right. Okay. 
So you've got to think of yourself as like tiny atoms splitting up. Yeah. But yeah. All, all in the same consciousness. Yeah. So so look at like Einstein said that energy does not die. Energy does not die. No. So your conscious brain is part of is your, is part of your soul. And when you die, you pass on, you move on. And your consciousness, who you are, um, you you then pass on to another plane. Now, another plane, from what I've been shown, is imagine like a, a grid going round the earth like mm. this, just 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 sort of uh, parallel lines going around. So we're on this plane now, right? Yeah. And we see the trees a certain color, we see the grass a certain color. When you pass on, depending on if you've had a good life here and you've been pleasant and nice, yeah. you will go to the next plane. So you'll pass on to the next one. You don't go to like a heavenly nirvana. It's here. Yeah, right. It's okay. on earth. But you're seeing it in a different way and you're feeling it in a different way. So right. the sky might be a different color. Everything is more vivid. Everything is lighter. We're on a higher vibration. Here we're on a slower vibration. Right. So everything on this plane now, everything, we're all, we're all burning. We're all burning energy and we're all vibrating at a certain <clears> frequency. <throat> and when we move on, we go on to the next plane, is a higher by um frequency and yeah. your vibration is much quicker always i always think about so um, you could say that like, there's another plane after that then maybe absolutely there are many planes mm. and also lower planes as well so depending if you if you've murdered in this life then you will go down a level or two and it's grayer and it's darker it's not fire and brimstone and all of that it's grayer it's darker it's heavier it's slower it's weightier it's more depressing and so and, and so on and so on and and, and the, the levels are, are different frequencies and i absolutely adore there's a gentleman called jürgen zu and he's on youtube and he's done the most amazing he's an artist but he's also a neuroscientist are actually using him to do talks about what happens he goes into these sort of lucid dreams but he actually draws graphic designing on his computer the images and the places that he sees and he oh, wow. actually talks about the different planes and how through meditation he's able to access these different planes how he's spoken to his his mother his father who present in their 20s and 30s uh, uh, people that have passed on that look so much younger and happier yeah, um, right. And he's so that's Jurgen Zhu. If you're really interested, he's absolutely fascinating. But the fact that neuroscientists find his work really interesting and invite him to talk yeah. to young scientists to me is really, really impressive. So he talks about that and he talks about these different planes yeah. going lighter and darker. But going back to ghosts, there are many different hauntings, as you know. But I love this theory of. A ghost is on a higher vibration. So imagine, you know, when you're sat in the plane and you, you're lucky enough to, or not lucky enough, to look in the propeller where it's where the propeller yeah. is housed in the part of the aeroplane. The faster that propeller spins, what happens? Yeah, it looks like it's staying still and that sometimes, doesn't well, it? it? Or it goes, goes backwards, backwards yeah. or, yeah. And, it, yeah, when it's sort of, it, 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 the most, the, the, the heavier matter of it disappears, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, can yeah. see through it, yeah. But, so the vi so so it's based on that theory really it's very sort of um, okay um, I like I no, like, I like that, that theory yeah, I yeah. really like yeah. that theory and so when yeah. you're communicating to these spirits you're you know you don't know what plane you're sort of tapping into right no no absolutely not and that's the thing I always say to people you it's know it's like a parallel universe yes we that's exactly i mean what level are we on here exactly yeah. and you might you might only it? be it might be easier to um, communicate with the lower frequencies because they're closer to the frequency that we're living at. So that's maybe why that's maybe why we see mm. ghosts as being bad mm. or evil or you know. And I suppose but, that also um, thinking about it, you know, you have people that do lots of meditations and yoga and stuff. They are all trying to change their vibration. Oh, it's all about vibration, you know? mate. They reckon that the uh, whole world runs on vibration yeah. and waves. Yeah, you know? and like you know, sometimes you know when you can, when you speak to somebody, you can pick up sometimes on a negativity or you know. Or, oh or yes, it, you know you can yeah. pick up on That's that. That's really you? common. Yeah, and mm. that happened to me. I was I was walking down the street and where I live, 
and I was going, I went into a shop and there was a woman in there and I don't know what it was, but I, ha I had to leave the shop. I had to leave the shop. And then I walked down the road and she was coming past me and I actually had to get out the way. Was it and Lady I, C? I, it was it what? Was it Lady C? <laughs> 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 Lady C, you remember her? <laughs> What's that? When she was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, there was an old lady on there called Lady C, and Yvette had a little bit of an argument and fallout with her, I think. Oh, my just, God. Who, who yeah. was that? This lady, this it's old lady. Allegedly, allegedly a lady. Lady? Lady, I'm a lady. She was uh, married to a lord for all of about, I don't know, not very long, and um, she's kept hold, of, kept hold of the ladyship type oh, thing. Oh right, okay. Even though, apparently, and she knows she knows all the royal family and all the rest of it, but all the royal family and their aides say no, we don't really have anything to do with her. She's a very strange woman. Yeah, I don't. You know, <laughs> I, I didn't like her a bit. I'll Lady stand up C, for I'm going to have to. I didn't like her. She's so. a very difficult person. Yeah, and it's her way or the highway. That's it. It's my way, my thoughts, or the highway. And she made my time in the jungle really frustrating. And <laughs> oh, I can see her now. I can see. I'll, I'll put up an image on the uh, camera for. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Man. Look at her. That. Eh? Yeah. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah, I forgot. I looked so it she, up today, of it. I looked up what, like, what you've been up to and yeah. stuff, and I forgot you was in the jungle. You was That's like, oh, I'm a celebrity. Incredible. I forgot. Oh I God. forgot all about it. Tell me quickly what that was. What that was like before we get back into the paranormal. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and why did you say? Why did you say yes when you were previously seeing people eating like grubs and all this sort of stuff? You're like, been, actually, because... I'm quite hungry. I'll give that a <laughs> yeah. go. No, because Ben, when a woman hits the menopause, all of a sudden she goes, she goes oh, I need adventure in my life. <laughs> Screw the ghosts. I'm going and, to and the then Ka oh. Carl was like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I got the Absolutely. And weirdly enough, we booked a holiday to go to Africa and we were going on a, a remote safari. And then we got a red warning do not come. There's. Uh, hostage has been taken blah 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 so we that couldn't happen i'm really devastated because i was up for this menopausal adventure and then the <laughs> phone rang and it was my agent would you like to do the jungle yes uh, anything anything yeah. yes i just did an adventure and and yeah and, and it was an adventure uh, and i had some great times and i had some really bloody miserable times in there um and the worst thing is boredom you're just yeah, lying around that, days doing mm. nothing do they and feed you a bit do they sneak little bits of food in for you no they actually no, don't they bloody bloody. no they don't <laughs> see and, the and thing know, is that's day. that's a tactic that is a tactic keep you hungry keep you bored so you start slagging each other off and you know keep you oh, get cranky absolutely. don't you mm. no sugar oh, yeah and then, uh, the first day um oh my internet is unstable but i'll get rid of that and um, yeah the first day that we were we were there we was uh, uh, i said i'm not parachuting in i said you've got to be joking i'm not doing that forget it <laughs> that'd be Janet me ellis, uh, no, Janet ellis parachuted in on blue peter and broke her legs or a pelvis or something oh, I, Christ. <laughs> I said I'll go, I'll go cross country on a bareback camel ride whatever yeah, yeah, but I'm not yeah. going anyway so uh uh and the production team had bananas with them, bottled water, and some of those energy bars. All right. And uh, and every time we were hungry, they were going, "Here, have an energy bar. You'll be fine. You'll be fine." And I was thinking, "Oh my God, this is fabulous. They do give you snacks. I'll be absolutely fine." <laughs> and when I did my first chat with them, they said, "Are you all right with beans and rice?" And I said, "Yes." I said, "Are there tea bags?" And she said, "Yes, liar." There are no tea bags there. <laughs> I was so upset. I can't tell you that did it for me. And I actually burst into tears when oh, I was God. searching through this bag, going, "Where are the tea bags? Where are the tea bags? <laughs> no tea bags!" And I was absolutely desperate. But anyway, yes. So, so they were giving us these uh, energy bars. Anyway, you get to camp, and that uh, that stops. Nothing. No more energy bars. No more water. No more nothing. And I had. I didn't realize I had a caffeine crash because um, at the time I, yeah. I owned a tea room in Manchester. So I was like into tea and tasting different tea and or yeah. coffee and all this kind of stuff. Hi, hi, yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah. And I was like, caffeine. 
yeah, high on caffeine. And then to go from having caffeine, having caffeine, and then nothing. Nothing. It was cold turkey. Open. Yeah, couldn't stop shaking, wanting to be sick, really bad headaches. Oh, wow. Crying. Oh, <laughs> God. They say as well it's as really the menopause, bad. as well as the menopause. <laughs> oh, my God. Absolutely. They say caffeine, caffeine no, crashes, like coming off caffeine is really bad, they say. They say the symptoms yeah. are quite serious. Yeah, you know? It's a yeah. pretty strong drug, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I remember an ex-girlfriend of mine. Um, she, uh, she, uh, I, I said to her one day, she said, I said, Do you, have you noticed I've been really, really tired this week? And she started laughing. I said, what are you laughing at? She goes, well, every time I've been making you coffee and buying coffee, I've been getting decaf. No. Yeah, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, man. Yeah. So you actually knew, yeah. You felt it then. Yeah, definitely. And as well as those, um, the, the energy bars you had, that's a sugar crash as well. Because that, that energy, that's just all it is, is sugar in those oh, things. Oh, I know. The worst thing they gave me, we had to do lots of things, sit in a caravan and they fed all these massive spiders in and snakes and I had to sit there and have them all crawling all oh god it was awful and then and then another one was to drink a milkshake oh. and it crushed triantula oh my god <laughs> and me, me and the beautiful Georgie Porter we did this thing together well, we both were in the bushes trying to make ourselves sick with our fingers down our throat. And, you know, for days afterwards, I could just feel, where every time I swallowed, hairs oh. stuck in my throat. From <laughs> see, tri- no, see, no, see, the thing is, a triantula, that wouldn't bother me because they're dry. I think what I would, I would the like... The body it. bit's not. Yeah. It's just all full I, of juice. I wouldn't, li- I would, no, I wouldn't like anything that, that feels like snot. You know, like a or, like, fruit or like something a, like that, a, a or... chunk of meat blended up and things like that. That's what oh. I would like. But yeah, what spiders... about what about a fermented egg? Have you seen that shit when they eat that black oh. egg? Oh, it's like no. an egg that's years old. It's fermented. It's black. Oh, oh my no, god! It's no. like jelly. No. Oh, I couldn't do it. Did you try? Did you did you eat those? Um, is it the grubs? Those like the big no. worm things? No. Which no, didn't get to that. I was terrified, absolutely terrified of, of doing anything like that. I just thought, oh my God. I remember going, we, one, I had to go in a room and uh, and first of all, the first room I went in was a house and it was full of rats in oh. total darkness, full of rats. And that didn't scare me one bit really? because A, I was used to going into dark houses, but B, and the sad thing was, is those rats are tamed rats. They're not wild rats. I was just going to say, were, yeah. Yeah, they were terrified. Really? You could actually, they were all hiding underneath all the Try chairs and the away. cups. And <clears throat> I could see them shaking. Oh, bless. You, well, and that's... I felt so sorry for them. I am surprised that that show, especially in today's yeah, you know, yeah. environment, I'm amazed that that show's allowed to continue because, well, where are they getting the triantulas from? Mm. Are they are they just killing them? Are, 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 what are, are they farming them and killing them? What's the... Where are they getting all these? And there's big crates, big crates just full of all these. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Rats and all these. Where, I, I don't understand how, how it's been managed to carry on, to be fair. Yeah, you know? yeah good point. How, how do you, on that note, how do you, um, how have you seen the, the television industry change over the years? You know, because obviously when you started doing Blue Peter up to nowadays, it must be from one spectrum to the other, right? Yeah, it, it's so sad because I see mainstream TV um, and, I, and I think it's so sad because, like, for instance, let's take Blue Peter. So there was a TV show that everybody knew. You grew up with it. Yeah. And they decided to take it off mainstream BBC, put Pointless on, which is a, 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 a you know a good show if you like game shows and stuff. Um, but they took that off and they put it on CBBS. And now I think they're getting rid of CBBS or something. It's going on iPlayer. Uh. I think it actually returned zero viewing figures in one of the bar viewing figures. Jesus. So what's ha- why have they done that? And and it frustrated me and upset me because I just thought here's a show that was a flagship, yeah. not a children's show. It was a family show. Absolutely. Grandma. Granddad, families used to sit together. Schools go home and work. We're going to collect our bottle tops. We're going to be a pee. We're going to do this, that, and the other. All that's gone now. And that's such a shame. But they're happy to bring, you know, and quite rightly so, Doctor Who back and remake it and all the rest of it. They should be spending the money on shows that 
families get a great deal of, of uh, fun and they, you learn stuff from that show. Obviously, I'm very passionate about it, but that annoyed no, me. That's true. I'm, I mean, the figures, yeah, they I'm, must uh, speak for themselves. The figures speak for themselves. Yeah, I mean, exactly. did, did the, uh, was it that the the figures were dropping over the years? Was was that what it was happening with Blue Peter? And I, I, I mean, I don't think so. Yeah, because it was taken off BBC One, and they should have kept it on BBC One. Mm. Um, and that's the sad thing. You see, if I was head of BBC, what I would do is I would what I would do is I'd get uh, a new new Blue Peter presenters. I'd get an old Blue Peter presenter and mirror it. With, so you get two old Blue Peter presenters and two new Blue Peter presenters. So there's four Blue Peter presenters, and you'd have them um, have um, present that show. So you could have like Janet Ellis and Peter Duncan, and then you get two new yeah. presenters. And that way, you've got people like me and older go, oh, God, I remember that. Oh, they said green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then with it, with perhaps going off filming with a, with a younger, you know, 18, 19-year-old yeah. lad. Mm. You know, that, bring it back. I just think it's such a shame. And there's so, it's such a shame. Because but you've got the so power to do that, Yvette. You've got the power to do it. Oh, I haven't. No, you not have. at all. No, no, no. God love you. But no, I, I certainly haven't. And honestly, it's like banging your head against a brick wall. And it's, there's so many, what used to be fantastic shows on mainstream yeah. one, two, three, four, and five. And yet, I mean, I, I miss I miss some of the game shows as well. I mean, don't get me oh. wrong. The game shows we're we're renowned to having fantastic game shows in the UK, but I I, I, uh, I miss like, yeah and um, strike it lucky yeah man. oh brilliant and awesome. of course look at look at look at comedy now. I'm sorry, but you can't I mean, you can't say well, anything now. You can't, you can't say anything, but. but <laughs> Where's the days of Morecambe and Wise? Where's yeah. that late Saturday night or Christmas special oh, where yeah. everybody was wetting themselves laughing? When was the last time we had the, a, a, a brilliant sitcom that can beat Only Fools and Horses, The Vicar of Dibley, yeah. you know, uh, Rising Damp, you won't remember that. Oh, Miss oh. Jones, Ridley, all <laughs> of that. You know, it, it, there's nothing like that anymore. And oh, it's no. such a shame because there's so many talented people out there and they're not being given the chance mm. because the TV stations are, I don't know what it is. It's all, I don't know, mates for mates. Oh, I work at Channel 4. Oh, well, I tell you what, if you commission that, then if you go um, uh, and do your own production company, then you can give me a job. Of it. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll do that for you. Yeah. There's so many ideas ba that are stolen. Backhanded and all that sort of oh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, Netflix, your Amazons, all, all these streaming services have come up. And I have to say, I don't watch mainstream television. I will watch Netflix and yeah. Amazon. Same and there. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a shame. And, I, you know, and, and also different TVs, they've gone so far over to this ridiculous, you can't say anything oh, because yeah. you don't want to offend anybody. It annoys anybody. me. But the, 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 see, the thing is, that like 99% of people feel like you and I here now about this. But it's the, it's the minority that, that is, uh, is, is unfortunately ruining it for most people. Yes. You know? Yes. It, it really, really is. And you see, the sad thing is, is most people are too frightened to say anything because they don't want to get cancelled yeah. or they don't want, to, you know, this, that and the other. And I understand that. And so, you know, there I There has to be a balance. Anything. And at the moment, there's no balance. They're absolutely right. And, and, and there isn't a balance. And it's such a shame. It just frustrates me because I know there's so much young talent mm. out there. You know, like yourselves, you're here doing your shows and all the rest of it. Yeah. You know, why hasn't somebody seen you and gone... Right, let's give him a show on 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 Channel Four. Let's give him a show on on BBC Two. Yeah. Why not? New faces, and I'm sick and tired of seeing the same old faces on daytime <laughs> television. I'm They're sick of seeing his bloody people. face of it. Sick <laughs> of bloody <laughs> seeing it. <laughs> you know I mean? And I'm just thinking, can we just have a breath of fresh air? Just yeah. get some new young people on there. I want Most Haunted to come back on television, but I don't want to be on it. I want it to be Most Haunted, the next generation. What about Netflix, it... Yvette? Why don't you try and yeah. put Most Haunted I... on Netflix? I... Do you know what? I... I don't know. It's just a case of, I suppose I'm long in the tooth now. I mean, I'm 54. Carl's coming up for 60, and you think we've been doing it for 20 years. Yeah, but no, you're still, no, if no. you're still enjoying it, age doesn't matter. That ain't, that, to be Does fair, it? that ain't that old. No, it's not. That's yeah, not that but, old. Yeah, but I think... You clearly have got, still got the fire in you to do it. Oh, I have. I tell you, I've got 
tell you I am. But no, it's all about giving other people the chance. But you could and start not... it and then pass, like you know, pass the torch on, sort of thing. You yeah, know? or maybe do the voiceover. But that's yeah. it. I just Why don't you do it? it. Yes. Yeah. Young people. <laughs> that's what we need. Young people Young. on there. I Young. see it. <laughs> 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 if most wanted gets a commission and goes on the TV, it it it, it should be most wanted the next generation. I'm mm. telling you. It would be good. You know, I'd love really to see should. that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But you know what, and, Yvette? My kids, that my kids, right? I've got a twelve-year-old and a nine-year-old, and they don't. There's no. There's nothing there on TV for them. I used to come home from school and watch cartoons or ITV. Then I used to watch Round the Twist and Blue Peter Round and Twist, Grange yeah. Hill, and you know. And then Saturday yeah. morning, I used to get up and set my alarm for nine twenty-five to get up for Disney Club. Yeah, and then you know, yeah. watch all that. Yeah. There's none yeah. of that anymore. Yeah. Are you why? Still, why? I don't why? know. It's, but I think why? kids now, my kids come home, that all they want to do, they just want to go and play their PlayStations. You know? That's yeah. all they want to do. They just or, want Or YouTube. Or uh, YouTube, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. It's too easy for them now. They've got so much entertainment and their attention spans are being shortened and shortened and shortened yeah. all like, the time. It's like, like YouTube shorts pisses me off. It's like 10 second videos and my boy just sits there and after 10 minutes, I have to kick him off it. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the thing. Horrible. That's a, that's, it's um it's actually proven now that it's actually really damaging for children this whole tiktok and things yeah, because short videos. what it does it it signals these um like endorphins to the brain of what you're yeah. watching mm -hmm. and then obviously they they only go on for like 20 seconds yeah and then the other thing and so you're just basically flicking for endorphins yeah, yeah. and then that's why it's so addictive and then when you, and then when you come off that You've got nothing else in the life, your everyday life that stimulates you. Yeah. And the other bad thing as well is like you'll see funny, 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 sad, like extremely sad, like from extreme, like yeah, both ends. Yeah. So yeah. your emotions go <laughs> flick. Oh God. And it's not good for the brain. It's not good for your emotions and no. all that sort of stuff. So I don't. But I'm with you on that, mate. My, my boy, my, my 12 year old boy, he, his attention span is really bad. Mm. You know, he's mm. a lovely lad. Yeah. But honestly, you'll start doing something with him, and within five minutes, you can tell he's getting bored already. Yeah. It's oh my god! If I, when I was a kid, if I was doing this, I'd absolutely love yeah. it. You know. But didn't our like? I remember my like, my mum and dad saying when I was a kid, we didn't do that. Yeah, it you makes know? you sound it, well old, doesn't it? It all. I think it all changes, and our kids will probably say that to their kids, and it will just carry on. Don't you think? Well, no. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Go on. No, no. I agree with you, absolutely. But I just think, I feel very, very sorry for parents today. I really, really do. Because it's so easy, isn't it? And I see it an awful lot where you're out in a restaurant and when I used to take the kids out, uh, we used to go for dinner, we used to take them a colouring book or some crayons and we'd all play, or a piece of paper, and we'd all play that. You know, you write a sentence, um, John, and then, you know, fold the paper over, met, and then you oh, write you pass salary. it on, yeah, 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 yeah. And they said, and she said to him and all that. And we used to have such fun as a family doing all these and drawing silly pictures and yeah. having a laugh and all that sort of stuff. And and now I see these, these kids and they've got like iPads in front of them with earphones on sure. and they're not engaging yeah. in yeah. any of the it family's is... conversations. Yeah. And I think what, what, I feel sorry for the parents because it's you're pressured by the children and their friends and other parents. Oh, do this. It's a lot easier. And it is easier. I, I think to myself, if the iPad had been brought out when my kids were little, I, I actually have to think to myself, would I have caved in and done? And I think to myself... I, being honest, I probably would have yeah, done. Maybe yeah. sometimes. But even even sometimes. like even yeah. long like car journeys, you know. I remember from yeah. we had, we had to go from uh, Bridgewater to Scotland in a Ford Capri. Oh yes, oh, mate, I love that. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember as a kid because I was travel sickness as well. Like in, in the, the the top of the the roof there was like little black pin pricks. Yeah, yeah. And I then know it. it used to it used to just do that. I used to sit there tripping out. <laughs> Just looking at this, like what well, sick was coming out of my nose and everything. Like for 12 hours that journey. And we had no televisions. No, we used my, to make our own my games. My stepdad was like, we're going to have two stops at eight and then we'll, we'll get on. And now that was it. We had two stops. But now like you've got, you know, your embedded 
uh, iPads at yeah. the back of your car seats and all that sort of stuff. And it's, it's life of luxury for the kids now, isn't it? But, you know? but what they could do is they could ban phones and iPads and screens from restaurants and pubs and, you know, yeah. they could ban them yeah. and just say you're not allowed to use iPads or phones in here. Yeah. They wouldn't uh, do that. I know, but they should. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I would do if I was the Prime Minister? Just, just, for, just, I would do a thing where I would say for 24 hours, we're going to um, take over the television and we're going to take over the radio. And within that 24 hours, nothing will be broadcast except for happy things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fun, yeah. fun news stories, happy, uh, great sitcoms. The music is nothing but happy things. No one's allowed to talk about the music. <laughs> It'll never happen. It'll never happen. That'll never happen. But then you, you're, gonna, you're, you're gonna get someone who's just going through a breakup or something, and they'll be like, "I just want to fucking cry." <laughs> oh, no, you've got Malcolm and Wise going, "Bring me some." <laughs> and then someone will probably end up doing something silly, and they'll get sued. <laughs> yeah, 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 like on that bloody program, Ghost Watch. Oh yeah. God. Maybe, yes. So maybe that idea is a good idea yeah. at all. I, I really do do feel sorry for, for uh, parents today and and I and I do work there's a wonderful program I don't know if it's still on iPlayer she says um but it was a, it was it was years ago and it was called years and years and it was made by the BBC and it was a drama about what life in Britain would be like in years to come all right and it, Absolutely brilliant and scary as well because mm. some of the things that they've already talked about, bearing in mind this was filmed years ago, yeah. has actually happened. And wow. you're just like, oh my God, we're head we're heading mm. in this this awful mm. direction, you know. Have you um, seen the program on Netflix called Black Mirror? Because that's similar to what oh, you're yes. saying. I know. I watched the one, I couldn't watch it again. It was when the Prime Minister um, the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The I pig. I haven't seen that one. Let's not discuss that. Well, okay. I was so Bar upset. I was like, well, we did it. <laughs> Bar that one. The other ones are quite set in the future, like almost in the future. I don't, is that the only one you saw, was it? And then you can continue. I, I thought we are for life. Right, yeah. well, well, okay. That's probably not the, the best one they should have started off with, really, because after you get from that, they, they, they start going into. And there's one I remember, which is really, really good. It was uh, about they're following a young girl around. And um, it, the, the, I think the first part sets off where she passes a friend of hers. And um, everybody's got these sort of stars above their head. Yeah, like a rating. And she walks oh, past. She didn't she didn't see her friend. And a friend noticed, and she looked, went to her phone. And she went, "Oh, like that." And then her star yeah. went went down. Yeah, you know? I've heard about this. Yeah, so yeah. it's all on, on how you rate on uh, on social media. Yes. And yeah. Oh my god. And then but she couldn't get into a she couldn't get into a restaurant, and then because what? of her stars, and then she was trying to please somebody to get her stars. Can you just give me an extra star and all this sort of stuff? And it was her life just revolved around, and you just saw it crumbling away. Do you know it's already started? Yes, it's in, in China. China, isn't it? Yeah. Scary oh, shit. Yeah. Scary, Scary shit. That. So if you do something good for charity, then you get more credit. Mm. If you do something bad, if you steal or if you're disrespectful to an elderly person, your credit will drop down. I mean, come on. I know, it's it's control, who man. thought of that and who it's agreed control, to that? Dude, it's, it's just control. It's, uh, I reckon that's the way it's all going. That's what they want. Uh, that's what, Yvette, you know, they want control, don't they? Yeah. But I also oh, yeah. heard of it. Is it true that in China, that. if you have, say, I heard, if you have savings, every three months, the government takes 10% of your money? So oh, if, I didn't hear uh, That's what I've heard. So, so they're discouraging you. They don't want people to have money, basically, a lot mm -hmm. of money. So every three months, they take 10% of everybody's money out of the banks. Not wow. banks, where it's all digital banks now, but yeah. I've heard that well, as well. I don't know if it's it. true. Yeah, and you see, we're not going to have any control over anything. Look at look at the way how look at how cash has disappeared. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. crazy. So well, like da da David Ike said this, didn't he? A long time ago, they're trying to get Absolutely. rid of uh, money. Yeah, because they can say no, you're not buying something. Yeah, and no, not I don't agree with everything that he says, but some of the stuff yeah. he says, I think, my God, you're 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 absolutely right. And we are governed, I really believe, by this 
this sort of community of, of incredibly wealthy, very influential people and businesses. And I think, what are they called now? It's it's called something, and they're they're, they're sort of, I think their le- their sort of boss guy is a German guy. Is it? It's called the is it called the oh the World Economic Forum? Oh yeah yeah. Now if you you look up the World Economic Forum, they have their own website and it tells you exactly what their manifesto is for the world what they want and i think one of their mottos is and forgive me if i'm i'm wrong i probably am and it's something like you will own nothing but have everything yeah yeah and that's what they oh, want oh like you. everything's going to be rented yes yeah yeah it's how like, scary is that yeah, it's really scary you won't own a thing but you have yeah 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 where are those stones there's some stones like three stones i'm sure they're in denver or somewhere in america that have got the rules of life on them what oh, are I they called no, I've not heard of that. It's, one. Um, I'm looking it up now. Yeah, something <laughs> about some stones with rules of life or rules of the the future, basically right. what they want. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, but it's it's crazy that subject when you yeah. go into all that. Like, yeah. look at Bill Gates. I heard the other day that Bill Gates is buying he's buying loads of farmland. Oh yeah, loads of land as well. And Bill yeah, Gates is buying up all the land, all the yeah. farmland. Why? Why? I know it's really weird, and also, I didn't hear that. It, yeah, yeah, it could who be was, wrong. Could be total bollocks. You know? Who was the medical uh, medical guy during COVID in America with Trump and um, what was his Fauci. name? Now? Fauci. Yes. Yeah, I don't Fauci. know Fauci. Yeah. Well, apparently, he, him, and his company. Um, there was this um, allegedly. It's not my personal opinion. <laughs> yeah, allegedly, it's always allegedly, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. Um, was an interview with a a female scientist who was actually put in prison because she found the cure for AIDS two years before the medicine was manufactured. And who shut her down? Who shut her down? Apparently Fauci. She actually said she went to Fauci. Here's the data. Here it is. We can save millions of lives. And he shut her down. And Mm. then who now owns the patent? Oh, yeah. Yeah, big pharma. Yeah, yeah. But for for that pharmaceutical company that makes that drug to cure, you know, to to cure AIDS, uh, it's Fauci's, according to this one. And she ended up in prison. Yes. And it's it just it's so corrupt. And and this is the other thing is that for me we're spoon fed so much in our societies, aren't we? You know, you look at the television, you look at the news, we're spoon fed stuff, mm. and we we believe it because we want to trust in someone we want to we want to believe in a in a in a government we want to trust in our uh, i i think the trust is totally gone down absolutely yeah. but it it has and we need and as a human civilization we've always sort of wanted that sort of to look up to to mm. you know we need to better ourselves we need to do this we need yeah. to do that. And it's so sad when you actually go and it's made me sit, sit with covid and that first started i really researched into all of that Mm. And it really made, I opened my eyes to it, a lot of things. And I thought, do you know what? Don't be a sheeple. Don't just take everything on Facebook. Don't just listen to the news and believe it. Do mm. your own research. Do your own digging and make up your own mind then. Because we're fed so much stuff. Yeah. And it's such a If it's thing. on TV, it must be true. Like- <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it isn't. Well, to go back to most haunted and paranormal, which is what we were talking about before. Yeah, yeah. We can have these conversations back and forth. Um, but what's the, the? I think the saddest thing is that, unfortunately, we can't do anything about it, can we? Or can we? I don't know. Well, you say that. We can as a collective. You know, we yeah. can do anything as a collective. But yeah. they, I think they've, they're they suppressing everybody so much. There's so much shit information out there. Mm. And there's there's 20 different... Well, we said this about the internet, yeah, didn't we? I mean, we you did, can, mate. You, can... you, you can't find the truth now if you no. want to. No. You know, the truth's out there somewhere. But I think it's purposely muddied because they don't want people to know the truth mm. and all get together and there'd be uproar. Yeah. Civil war, you know? Mm. It'll... I don't know. Yeah. It's, no, it's, I don't it's like true. the world anybody, at the minute. But you look at anybody that stands up, anybody in history that stood up mm. for the people and said, this is not going to go on anymore. Even you go back to um, religious figures, mm. Jesus Christ, for example. Yeah. You know, there's a man that stood up, you know, wanted to teach us right from wrong and all, help us and all the rest of it. And lots of other um, messiahs, 
you know, for different religions. Yeah. And you go from there right through uh, all these different people that have tried. And what's happened to them all? Tell me what's happened. Yeah, they're gone. Well, they, yeah, they, get, they get shot yeah. down. They yeah. get cancelled. They know. get executed. It's they like get YouTube. They, because the higher mm. echelons are saying, no, 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 no. Yeah. You're not going to do that. You're not going to cause civil... I mean, you... this is a, a completely different thing. But you look at John Lennon. John Lennon was trying... I'm a massive Beatles fan, by the way. Yeah. John Lennon was all for peace, all everything. He was in the United States, and I truly believe that he was assassinated. And I really believe that Chapman was taken in by the FBI, do whatever they do, you know, because he was mentally unstable anyway. And they said, right, you're going to go and... I don't know how they do it, but yeah. these people are pretty clever. But the they thing want is, to bridge them. The, yeah. the, the question is, okay, and, and, and playing devil's advocate here these things that you know people being shut down like who is it i suppose and and why what is the purpose of shutting down these people that are trying to spread positivity what what are people gaining from this because at the end of the day um they don't want civil unrest they don't want all our sheeple to suddenly go hang on a minute, what's going on here? Let's riot in the streets, let's do this, let's... They don't want that. What they want is for them to control us, for us to be good sheeple and to go to work and to put our money in the yeah. bank, uh, or, you know. Uh, yeah. And, and I mean, I'm no economist or anything like that. I'm, I mean, I'm speaking from layman's terms. I don't know too much about it. Yeah. But, <clears throat> you know, and, and every so many, I don't know, 100 years, We'll have a we'll have a big kick-ass war, and why yeah. do we have a big kick-ass war? Because money is made from from war. Because yeah. all these companies. I mean, I couldn't believe it when I was told in in World War Two that the Americans were actually giving ammunition to the Germans and was actually giving the Germans fuel that could take them above a certain altitude. The Americans were doing that yeah. and earning shitloads of money from it. Yeah, and yeah. So, and it, it's always the case. It's, there's it's also all about borrowing and giving, and yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of money in weapons. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> These oh, weapons yeah, aren't absolutely. cheap. No, mm. and 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 everything has another. Everything is not as it seems. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't take everything on face value. Yeah. Look into it for yourselves. Yeah. You know, that's what well, I'm we, we, you To be that. fair, we, we do that, don't we? We do. Yeah. We do. I get we, accused of... Well, ben, Ben's similar to me. He's, he, he likes... To, you, lo you like the same thing. Yeah, you I like, don't. Like, you, you like know, finding out I mean, every I've, option. I've fallen out with family members because of my views me on too, it. And I'm not me following too. the news. I'm not following what most people are saying. I'm like, well, hang on a second. Let me just think outside the box here. You know... And um, yeah, I've, I've fallen out with family members because of it. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll just keep my mouth shut just because, uh, you know, I'm going to be, yeah. you know, accused of being, a, I don't know, a conspiracy theorist or something like that. And, but you know, that, you see, that term to me is, is an incorrect term. That's I agree I'm, with you. I'm I agree exactly with the you. same. I hate that term. It's. It, yeah, it just means you're interested in it's labeling in in different stories or hearing everybody's thoughts. Well, it's having on a something. different thought process. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just because that's science, isn't it? Mm. Science is prove it. You know, you, you you work out all the theories, all the options. Yeah, you hear all the options, you do your testing, and it comes up with one of the answers, and you think, oh, it's got to be that then. You know? Yeah. So I'm yeah. trying to find out all these answers. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm trying. You're trying to find an answer. It doesn't mean you're a conspiracy theorist. It's mm. just like, oh, well, it could be that. It could be that just as much as that. Yeah. Who says? Exactly. You know? exactly. And and there's no right or wrong, is there? There's no kind of unless you have definitive proof one way or the other. Like for me personally, I don't believe that we landed on the moon. But that's my personal belief. It doesn't mean to say that I disrespect people that you know, which is the majority of the planet, believe that we went to, mm. to the moon in 1969. Me personally, I believe it didn't happen. Yeah. I believe one of the best movies that should have should have won an Oscar in 1969 was that film uh, shot by Stanley Kubrick. Which one's that? The moon landing. It was marvellous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you say it because um, I used to be on the same wavelength as you I, I yeah and that's one of the things that i fell out with my family members about the moon, really yeah the moon landing yeah see so so yvette psychic yeah. she just picked up yeah, on that yeah, then yeah. and brought it up you but, see but um and then i i, I was like okay but i have to because what i was doing i was finding 
I was finding that I was searching for things that were prove were proving against the moon landing. So I was like, okay, well, let's try again, play devil's advocate. Let's just try to search for things which prove that it did happen and why it did happen and debunking the debunkers type thing. And so I've got to a point now of where I'm like, there's a lot of evidence to say that, there, that it couldn't have happened, but there's a lot of evidence to say there could be. So now I'm sort of just open to the idea that it could have happened, you know? A bit like yeah. the paranormal. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, for me, the one thing, and I will say, I mean, I've gone through it all. I've gone through Van Allen's belt. I've gone through uh, <laughs> the Tatar theory. I've gone <laughs> through all the shadows. I've gone through all of it, and I've had... Uh, arguments back and forth and all of that kind of stuff but for me for me the one thing is is that if we had gone to the moon and done a live broadcast apart from the lots of other arguments that i won't go into now then why have we never gone back up there and done another live broadcast perhaps the chinese or the russians um oh look here we are again aren't we great america look here's the flag yeah, hey, yeah. We're broadcasting live to you. Yeah. never not once. And there was one the other day. It was an unmanned mission, wasn't it? In the an 20, unmanned 27th mission, yeah. of September. Yeah. yeah. They went back to the moon and it was unmanned. Yeah. And it somebody was once said to, somebody <laughs> once said to me, I mean, how, I can't remember off the top of my head how many miles it is from Earth to uh, the moon. But somebody said, and I did have to chuckle, and I think, that, again, it has been explained, but somebody says, you know, we had a live broadcast from the moon, but why is it? when you're trying to speak to somebody in Australia <laughs> over Google, you know, yeah, Google Zoom or work. something, you've got like a 20 second delay. You're like, we're yeah. here live and, you know, yeah. so and so. Yeah. It's true. Know, Sorry, there's a bit of a delay. And then, and the moon there's landing is like, all right, what's it like up there? Bloody brilliant, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And there's all sorts of wonder. That's why I love it because it's, you've got so many foreign, like you, you know, absolutely want you guys. It's like, you know, it, is it, did we go? Didn't we go? And you're open-minded to it. Yeah. I'm open-minded to it, but in my mind, I've made my mind up, but yeah. I'm open to any new suggestions yeah. and, and things like that. But I know, um, you know, even now what it takes to make a live broadcast, a live broadcast yeah. just in the UK, yeah. uh, how many trucks you need. I mean, it was, let, let me just say, in the early 2000s when we were doing Most Haunted Lives, uh, it's probably changed an awful lot now and, and, and you know, things have got smaller and you don't mm. need as much equipment. But yeah. then, yeah, yeah. oh, my God, the trucks we needed, massive scanner trucks, huge sat satellite dishes, <laughs> line of sights, this, that and the other. Oh, my God, it was an enormous. Well, we've got thing. we've got fast internet now of it. Oh, got... I know. <laughs> yeah, but no, she's talking about back in, back then when they were trying to get on the moon. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, just but, think, but... the equipment that was needed in the early 2000s to just do yeah. a, a, a broadcast in the UK, how on earth did they do what they did in 1969? And not only that, what makes me giggle as well is when you look at the shot of, um, is it Buzz Aldrin that comes down first? Yes. I thought it was, yeah, Buzz Aldrin comes down first. So who's got that shot? Yeah, yeah. And when the when right. the, when the moon lander took off at the end, it was filmed yeah. from a camera on the moon. And I as it goes know. up, the camera pans up. It pans up as the moon lander took off. It's so I, you've left you've left the you've left Carl on the moon. <laughs> Carl, we'll come back in hundred years, you bastard. <laughs> shots with Buzz Aldrin coming down even if they argued and said well it was a camera strapped to the leg of the uh, of the spaceship do you mean to tell me that you've managed to go blast off through orbit through Van Allen, through all that radiation and it actually be in a perfect shot yeah yeah you know it's just uh, and there's no there's no crater where the where when the engines I'm with take yeah. I'm with you of it I don't I don't but believe it either. okay so that is, that so is an and Stanley Kubrick admits it on YouTube, even though they say it's fake. There's a wonderful interview with Stanley Kubrick, and he actually says, yes, 
uh, I faked it. It was done on my studio. Um, and also Buzz Aldrin. There's a few interviews with Buzz Aldrin. And he, a little girl says to him, so why have we not I've gone back it. to the moon? And he says, we never went. Yeah, I think yeah. I've seen it as well. It, didn't he say something like, um, I think sometimes you need yeah. to show people what they want to see. And yes. something along something the line like that. of that. Yeah, Apparently yeah. it was filmed I, in two hangers. Some, yeah, they, yeah. I saw a video the other day. And you the, you the realize girl. you realize <laughs> that somebody has to be the person that argues against this because there's going to be people at home now and going, "Oh, you little! We definitely did land on the moon, and here's oh, why." Absolutely, and it's... I, I, I absolutely. I mean, I, it was my birthday last week, and I had a meal and I had all my friends there, and there were two guys, my two lovely friends, Alan and and uh, Bill, and they absolutely 100% believe that we landed on the moon. So mm. we're having this conversation. <laughs> oh, and then you've got then you've got Greg who's a cameraman on most lighting cameraman on most haunted. And I've got these three guys and they're going, "You're talking out of your arse, Yvette. Oh <laughs> my god." And they go and they're arguing about, you know, and mm. the lighting camera was going the shadows and this that and the other and I'm going, "Yeah, I know what you're saying. I do, but I'm telling you, I can't help it. Yeah. I just I just I'm I not. I'm not. 100%. But what about all those thousands of people that were involved in the moon landing that haven't come out and said anything? They would all yeah, have to have been in the dark, was, right? Yeah, that's a really good point. And that was my one of my first when I started thinking about it. I thought, well, hang on a minute. All those thousands of people at NASA. Mm. How on earth? But apparently, according to Stanley Kubrick, or was it? Um, there was a scientist that worked at NASA. He had his. Uh, he was interviewed. It was for a Netflix documentary and he actually admits and says that um they all were shown um the studio output right they were sh they were shown the recording and believed it to be real yeah so they were just going about their job and they believed it to be real do you right. think do you think no way dude do you like, think i'm that, not 100 do you think it's ever gonna come out like you no know? no <laughs> right this is one right if this is the case if it is all fake then what's that's all about What's what? What's, what's NASA all about? Oh, there's some amazing yeah. stuff. Why? On why are the go why do the oh, government I, in America give billions of dollars to NASA? You know, you've got to ask that mm. question, don't you? Yeah. Is oh, it? Then we got to get into Area 51. Now, is it money? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is funny. I'm glad you said Area 51. I'm sorry, mate. No, but, no you're right. Mate. I think that was a hours. yeah. I think it was a hypothetical hours. question, right? Yeah. But um, regarding because obviously you you believe in the paranormal. And you just mentioned Area 51, because this is another good um, topic, is what's your thoughts on aliens? Do you think that aliens are among us or around us and coming to visit us? I am a huge ancient alien theorist. I absolutely love uh, the thought that um, our creator was, in fact, an, an alien. alien. Oh, OK. I, I believe that it, it, we, we look like them. They came here. They created us they left us and they buggered off and, and left us to it and what fascinates me is um the the finders of dna watson and crick they actually said and this blew my mind and i think it was crick that said dna this dna that we've discovered it hasn't been created it has been engineered oh really yes no way. It's engineered. Engineered by who? And also the DNA, it actually, in everybody's body, it turns in exactly the same way. Right. So it's not, you know, and, and the fact that, that Crick, or I think it was Crick or Watson said, it has been engineered. That to me blew my mind. Because why, why did he say that though? What was he seen that's made him come to that conclusion? I don't know. I, I absolutely don't know. He would, they were just being interviewed about their discovery. Um, and he- Maybe because it's it, like so perfect or- Have you, yeah, have you, have you, have you seen me. that um, that stone? I think it's in Egypt that's been cut in half with a laser. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing? That's unreal. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's dead straight. And looking at, and, and, and even just down, I know this is a, co a conversation that everybody has all the time around the world. Pyramids. But the pyramids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how wow. it, it, like. I saw something the other day about the pyramids that I thought was pretty cool. They've dug up this little area of land and they found a bit of a slope with steps either side of the slope, uh, close to the pyramids or right. near to the pyramids. And yeah. they think now that they did use slopes. And and manpower up 
either side of the slopes because some of the blocks were like two and a half tons each. And what they slopes could. pushing pushing it up? Pushing grips no. Up. See, because I saw I saw somebody who looked into that and they said. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, he says, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people say that, we, you know, they built the slopes and they pushed up there. And he said, do you know how fucking big that slope would have to yeah, be? I saw, I saw that podcast. <laughs> and it would have to be miles, Mile like long miles slope. long. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Uh, there is a theory that it used to be, they used to use, um, uh, what's it called when you can move things with your mind? Tele- um, telekinesis. Telekinesis. That we've yes. lost, we've lost the b- ability over the years to move things with our minds. That's another theory. It was way out there, isn't Jesus. it? Yeah, <laughs> Going back to the vibrations again, guy. Yvette. <laughs> I forgot the name of the guy, but there's a, I think he's called it, it's called something like Coral Island or Coral City. And I think it's in Florida. Um, and he um, allegedly, he, he moved these massive, massive stones. Um, and, uh, and, and people were saying, engineers, uh, uh, you know, scientists were saying, it's not humanly possible. <clears throat> he did it all on his own. He's a very eccentric chap. I mean, really eccentric. He was a bit, yeah. you know, um, did some strange things. Um, but some people believe that, they, well, they say that he had like a sort of uh, pyramid metal thing that was was used to, to crank these massive stones up. But they said that um, on the top of this thing was a was a strange black box, um, and some people believe that this was a way of teleport teleporting, uh, moving objects using this box. Like anti gravity or something. Yeah, that allegedly was given to him by aliens. I don't right. know, wow. but it's Could called be. something like Coral Coral Island, Coral something or other. Uh, and and that fascinated me. And so I I um looking about at some of the engineering with some some of these amazing structures around the world and how they actually got engineers today with these amazing laser cutting machines saying, "Oh my god, even this laser machine can't cut as straight as some of these stones wow. have been cut." Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, and I think some of the some of the think I forgot where it is. Is it in somewhere in America? And it's the Native Americans, and they've got stones around there, and allegedly a doorway, right. a doorway that um, is is it, it shaped like. And apparently, the Native Americans believe that this is a portal to mm. another realm, and that they talk in their history books about a star man who arrived, gave them information, and then left through this door. Could that be an alien? I love yeah, all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, funny yeah. enough, we we had we had a guest on here last time actually called James. He's got a YouTube channel called That Is Impossible, and he covers yeah. a lot of things like this. And I think that door, um, he's actually covered in his um YouTube. Oh, video. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the star people they're called, aren't yeah. they? That's what the Native Americans call them. That's and right. how you know Van Daniken um also wrote a book sort of um something of the gods. Oh, I can't remember what it was called. This 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 sort of book that really sort of started this whole ancient a- alien theorist. I mean, I remember that coming out when I was a kid, and he was the one that sort of took photographs and showed people these cave drawings of ancient man, but they had space helmets on. Oh yeah, there's rocks. loads of drawings like that, isn't there? Yeah, like yeah. yeah. And I've seen a picture yeah. with somebody with like you know, like old you know old um, like carvings and stuff with people. It looks like they've got mobile phones in their hands. Mobile Did phones. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and the oh, Anunnaki, they 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 sort of have been pictured a race called the Anunnaki um, and the Sumerians. They're the the most ancient civilization on our planet, or that we know of anyway, the ancient Sumerians. But there's an amazing gray a carving of what looks like a man in a spaceship with his feet on pedals. I've seen oh, it. Um, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, from the side view. It's like a side yeah. view. Yeah, I've that's, seen that. That's flight of the navigator, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was a great film, that Flight of the Navigator. Yeah. I always wanted that little creature, you yeah, know? Yeah, man, that was so Can you remember cute. that film, Flight of the Navigator? I know I've seen it and I loved it, but I can't really remember it. I'm getting older, you see. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> we, we are as well, Yvette, but yeah. we're trying not to. Well, look, jumping back to the paranormal, I really need to, because I, I know that the uh, the viewers are going to be like kicking me if uh, if I don't ask the questions. What I would say is the, the most scariest thing that you've seen or experienced in all of your investigations well two things 
obviously lots, but two things. The first time when I realised ghosts can harm you, um, and that was at Edinburgh Vaults. I think you can still see that on YouTube. Now, we were broadcasting live uh, to the Discovery Channel in America. So we were doing a live show oh, wow. for America and a live show at the same time for the UK. And we wanted to do the Edinburgh vaults, Nidri Street vaults, I think it was. And in those vaults, there's a stone circle in an ante room. Now, these stones date back thousands of years. And allegedly, um, they were placed there by a witch's coven. And um, you to show nothing but respect when you go into this room. You're not to stand in the centre of the circle and be disrespectful. I've seen Many nothing people... you were going to say about a vet. Sorry to interrupt. I've seen it. <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen, you seen, seen what the stones? I've, I've seen the stuff. I've seen, I think I've seen clips of this. Oh, have you? Yeah, I've oh, seen right. clips okay. of what happens. Yeah. So, um, so we we found out um, before we filmed and when we were doing the research that many um, members of the public who go and do tours there were actually getting scratches on their arms and hands yeah. when, they, when they were walking through this stone circle. Um, so we thought, oh, we'd best go and have a, a look at this. So, anyway, Carl and Stuart, Stuart's the bald guy, my, my cousin, uh, and the sound guy all decided that they were going to stand in the centre of the circle and swear and be very disrespectful before we went on air to see if we would get some kind of reaction. Mm. Anyway, we're doing our stuff and I'm opening the show and blah, 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 blah. And um, Stuart has got a camera just behind this shoulder here. Now that's transmitting across the States. And Carl is stood in the centre of the circle and the sound guy is stood opposite Carl on the far end with his back against the wall. And the rest of us are stood on the outside of the circle. Stuart's wearing a black leather jacket and all of a sudden he screams, ah, God, if it help me, I'm burning my back, it's burning, get it off me. So I ran over to him and I pull his black leather jacket off and through his T-shirt, you, you see blood coming through and he says, so we've got our torches and we're looking through. He pulls his T-shirt off and I'm, he's still got the scars today. What? Three massive scars from the top here on, the, on his shoulder down to the top of his, his left buttock. Three huge, deep scratches. I was explaining that to your wife when you get home, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey? At least it's on, at least it's on TV, mate. <laughs> yeah. so you can check. Yeah. So, so what I... It really scared me and upset me to the point where, when that happened, I was in shock. Yeah. When I look back on it now, I think, thank God there was a camera here because Stuart is in shock for at least 20 minutes before anything happened. So he's not out of shock. Yeah. He's not scratching himself with yeah. something. He's in shock. Yeah. And the fact that I pull his leather jacket off and you see the blood coming through the white T-shirt it's There's no fake. way yeah, that, that doesn't that not do, doesn't that make you think though if they if something can do that to you like why do you continue on with it like you know well, you could actually get yeah. really hurt on this yeah exactly so then what happened was literally as I'm getting myself all in a bit of a state with Stuart and trying to calm him down Carl screams and puts his hand on the back of his neck he has three scratches down the back of his neck and his neck's bleeding then the worst bit. The sound guy, do you this remember? Is the, this is the bit that I, yeah, yeah, I remember. He fell to the floor, his leg from just below his knee on the side of his leg down to his ankle was so deeply cut, you could see the bone. Oh, and right. He, That's was, a bit, yeah, he, right. Was, he was taken to accident and emergency and had to have stitches. Now, oh, you, you must have been thinking, all... Christ, I'm next. One, two, three, <laughs> bang, I'm next. Well, I couldn't live again. Remember, so you're live on air. You're trying to keep it together. Couldn't keep it together. I could not stop crying. I was in a mess. Mm. I resigned on air. I said, I'm not doing this anymore. Right. I'm not doing this anymore because everything you've just said was going around in my head. Everything that we've been doing was, when I thought about it, was, well, it ghosts can't harm you. And yes, it's a bit scary, And but I, I want to learn more about yeah, it. Yeah. All of a sudden, that completely changed yeah. and blew my mind. And I thought, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Yeah. This is messing with my head. Yeah. And so I resigned and we were in Edinburgh. And that night, the whole crew were up in our, we had like a, a, a couple of rooms on the top floor of this hotel. We all sat up all night. 
I couldn't stop crying. Uh, doctor was called because I was so upset about what I'd seen. John came back from the hospital. We, we waited up for him, and he's. I mean, it's just horrific. And and then when people say, "Oh, it's put on," it's this, that, and the other. I, I used to get so. I don't anymore, but I used to get so upset because yeah. I just think, well, because you know you didn't do, fake it, yeah. Oh, oh my God! Are yeah. you seriously thinking that we're that demented to make a TV show that we actually go and physically harm ourselves? Yeah. Anyway, so that was the first time, and I couldn't do the show. I had to have a break from it because it really messed with my head. Right. Um, and then I, you know, everybody was talking. Please come back. Please. Don't. Okay, fine. Come back. But what happened was my curiosity got the better of me and I started doing research into is this a real phenomena? I'd never really heard of it before because as you know, I was always scared about reading stuff and watching yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. I started reading stuff and found out that some of the most extraordinary cases within the world of the paranormal, especially that have been made into movies and and and, and books and so on, and um, were actually based on real cases. Yeah. So, for instance, the Exorcist, as you know, was Absolutely, based yeah. on a boy, not a little girl. And um, but some of the phenomena that occurs in these famous cases is scratches, scratches on the torso, scratches mm. on the back, scratches on the arm, and it's all to do with what i'm getting is negative energy mm. nasty evil negative energy and that's how it um uh, comes out yeah. that's how it manifests itself um, and so it's so attracted that, to when they were like yeah. slagging they're off and everything like that yeah yeah, yeah. So, so i'll show job. you you want you want me to do something i'll show you that's, and that's then the second, time, that. yeah. <laughs> second time um was at a uh, a little house it was on a council estate in pontefract in leeds and we filmed there first that 30 east drive oh jesus christ yes oh god <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go i'm so I, I i was thinking about well spoiler alert for the my casper site um subscribers i was thinking about going there and doing an investigation myself a ghost hunt on your own yeah, because I ain't going after you. Just gonna tell me what you're gonna tell me about. I was, I, I, I was planning I, I to do a solo. Huh? I was planning to do some solo ghost hunts. No, not there. No. No. Well, you're coming then. <laughs> Fucking not. We're gonna stay there the night. <laughs> Yvette's I, gonna I, have to come with us. I will come with you. Um. Uh. The, the, the problem is, if if I come with you, and and we ask, I say, car. It will kick off. Oh shit! Well, we, well he's got it. We've got to go there and get something. Yeah, I no. I tell you why. <clears throat> um, because they remember. Can, uh, they remember. No, no. Oh, maybe. No, oh, but you I, again. I think, yeah, <laughs> because we're like me and Carl do it week in, week out, week in. Well, I always think it's like, and it's been proven. If you do it lots. If you communicate with the other side a lot, you're like a little dynamo. You said so that you, before, you, didn't you? The more you yeah. do it, it sort of seems to be do, the more it you attracts. Get. So yeah. The more you do, you're opening yourself up to it. So when me, me and Carl will will go into a bloody old restaurant and the bloody table starts vibrating and the cutlery starts rattling. Oh, <laughs> I think you're making me not want to do these ghost hunts right now. No, so eventually, if you go to 30 East Drive, <laughs> my, 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 this is nothing to do with paranormal because the 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 estate that it's on, the kids know when there's somebody doing. Oh a, right. And then they start banging on the windows and all of that, and you won't get a, a, a minute's oh, peace. So that's a bit of a, a pain, a pain in the butt. Um, I wouldn't advise that you go on your own. When we went there, we went there to do a, a, a recording, and and from the moment we opened, put the key in the door. We heard somebody running upstairs. We oh, went up there. there I would just, oh, there. man, I would up. throw up everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I, 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 that was going to be a place of where, because me and Mace used to do them, like, I would say, what, maybe once every three months, maybe? Yeah. Three, four months, yeah? Just on a whim, wasn't it? And now I, I want to, um, I'm thinking about just injecting a little bit more stuff into my channel. 
So ghost hunts is what a lot of people like to see us do. And, um, you know, I, I can't keep on asking Mace to take some time out and stuff. So I just thought about doing my own sort of, just experimenting on my own, going out there on solo ghost hunts, you know, like Urbex type of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought that might be quite fresh, quite new. And also I think it will heighten my senses. It will make me freak out a little bit more, you know? Um, but I think that that 30 East Drive is something that I was planning to sort of lead up to. First yes, of all, would, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and lead up to that then. Um, and um, perhaps don't go on your own. Perhaps make yeah. sure you can go with him. But um, but we did Bob in jail. Bob in jail. Yeah, lovely, great. Yeah, I mean, brilliant. lovely. Listen to me, lovely. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, lovely. No, I have night like, Bob in jail. I have lovely memories of certain places. Prisons. Are, I love doing prisons. They're fantastic. Yeah. And schools. Amazing. Oh, I'd energy. like to do a school. Yeah. Lovely, lovely, love. But anyway, East Drive. So yes. going back to the harming thing, um, when we were doing, we had all sorts of, of things happening, um, and we got a fabulous trigger object where we put some ping pong balls on the floor, and there was no, there was no draft, there was no door open, no nothing, and there was a locked off camera, and the balls go one way, and then they go another way, and at the same time, you can hear this awful noise on the camera, like a kind of clicking growling type noise it was oh, really weird so we got that but then what happened was i'm downstairs and we're doing a, a seance or something downstairs we're getting a lot of banging all sorts of stuff happening upstairs is Stuart and carl now you know how expensive some of these top end cameras are yeah. for film tv so Stuart is carrying the main camera which is like 30 odd thousand pounds worth of kit mm. all of a sudden we all hear an almighty crash we run upstairs because we hear screaming. Stuart and Carl are both burned on their arms. And it's about, it's Carl's still got the scar. It's about here. And right. it's in a straight line across there. <clears throat> and Stuart has one in exactly the same place on, on, his, on his forearm. Hence, what? he dropped the freaking camera Jesus. on the floor. And the burns, you can actually see them develop on the, on the camera. Uh, you can, they're getting redder and redder and redder. The following morning, they had all scabbed up and both Carl and Stuart had to go to the doctors because they become infected with something and they had to take antibiotics to get rid of it. Oh, and they're still, oh, scarred. they're still scarred today. Wow. The most, and they described, I, least... it as being, they described it as being hit with a riding crop. Oh, okay. Like a whip. Like like a whip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, because when, um, I, when I've when i seen these um, scratches happen before and when people explain it, it's it's not like a surface scratch. Is it is it like an under the skin scratch, right, which then starts bleeding through? That's definitely what happened with Stuart in Edinburgh Vaults. Right. Carl's was more surface, right, like, okay. uh, like somebody had taken a, um, a, a drawing pin or a needle with Carl. Yeah. They were very fine. Yeah. And yet John's... I've never seen anything like yeah. it in my life. Like whip marks. So I, I, I get some people sending me um, stones and stuff, you know, protection mm. and things like that. Do you take these things with you? Do they work? I I take with me, I always wear, <laughs> if I'm going somewhere with negative energy, I will take with me um, a little necklace and in that uh, I have some of my dad's ashes. I have a crucifix of my grandmother's. And I have a little pendant of my grandfather's. Yeah. And I just, cool. I just take, and I believe that nothing bad will ever happen to me because I know I have this fearsome army of relatives standing around me, yeah. protecting me. And I really believe that. But I also, and I'm not a religious person, but after we did uh, East Drive, I remember sitting in that car and we had to give the keys back to the next door neighbor. And I remember uh, Carl and Glenn and Stuart. Glenn was the, uh, he's our open minded skeptic of, of the show. Um, they had turned all the lights off in the house and they had to post the keys through to the neighbor. Anyway, they all came. We said goodbye. Uh, I'm sat in the car watching everybody get in, the, in their cars and off we go. And as we leave, as we're just pulling off, we see all the lights come on in the house. No, oh, no, no. Uh, and I just. <laughs> I cried all the way home yeah. and I just kept saying under my breath, the Lord's prayer, because I know that we had dealt with something so negative and so evil. And I was terrified that something had followed us home. And so when I got home, 
I all the lights were on. I could not. That you're really freaking me out right now. (laughs) I don't mean to be. I'm just telling you the truth. I just want to make a YouTube video. (laughs) Sorry. sorry. And 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 so to me, there are there are places we had the most amazing. I've forgotten the name of it now, but it was a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere, and um, terrible things had happened there Uh, again. um, Same as the. house I've just spoken about in Pontefract nobody had been able to live in this house since since the I think it was the 60s and there'd been a suicide a man had thrown himself hanged himself out the window in the oh, attic God. and this was the worst thing is that a father had taken his young daughter and with a jet power wash had put the power wash down on, down her mouth and killed her oh my and, God. And various, yeah various other horrific things had happened in this house so we did so we went there to investigate it. Oh my God! It was it, it was incredible. It was it was hearing children's voices and singing and laughing and catching the audio, catching yeah. that wonderful phenomena. Mm, yeah. um, but we also took with us a haunted object. I don't know if you believe in haunted objects. I never believed in haunted objects until we took this freaking doll with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this horrific doll with us. Who had, a, a woman had given it to Carl, and she'd arrived at most haunted experience. She said, "Here, I don't want this. It's cursed. It, bad things have happened to me. Mm. It's a ba- you must have it." Mm. So he said, "Okay, I will have it, and we'll use it on most haunted." So he like, and his no, wife thank you. Yeah. <laughs> brought it to this uh, location, and we put it in the attic where the man had killed himself. And we, you can again, it's on YouTube. And we put it up against a wooden plinth, and we put locked off cameras on it. And I call out and I say, in the room, and then leave. I, if you're here, if there's anything here that's following us, blah, 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 then please do something. Make the doll move. Do you know how you do? Yeah, yeah, Calling yeah. Out, yeah. Do something. And that was another thing. In this house, now and again, periodically, for no reason whatsoever, you'd smell, you'd smell burning, you'd smell fire. Yeah. And you'd, no reason for it whatsoever. Just burning, God. proper fire smell, mm. deep smoke smell. Mm. And... um. Stuart is down a flight of stairs. The locked off cameras, you can hear Stuart saying, I can smell smoke, I can smell smoke. And then you watch the, the doll burst into flames. Oh, it spontaneously combusts into freaking flames. And everybody Jeez. runs upstairs. We put the fire out. Um, and then later on, Carl is with Stuart in another room and his whole sleeve, his whole arm goes up in flames. What? It just goes up in flames. So he's patting himself down like this. We give the coat. I'm surprised you go on any ghost hunts after. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, do you want to go for another ghost hunt? Fuck, no way. (laughs) It's like a crash test dummy. We gave the coat and we gave the doll to the Cheshire Fire Brigade. And they rigorously tested it for accelerants, anything that could have been used for uh, fraudulent means and so on. And it was so wonderful because he came back and he said, there's no accelerant tested on this coat or on the doll, and this is a complete mystery to, to, to no us. No way. And that, wow. and that to, to us. And do you know what's so frustrating is that even though you get the Cheshire Fire Brigade saying that, you still get people going, oh, well, they definitely set that alive, didn't they? they <laughs> you, always, you always get them. You <laughs> you like, like, yeah. You'll never, ever, no matter what you capture, Ben and Mace, on your ghost hunts, You'll always get a certain amount of people saying, what yeah. a load of old, you've the, made the, that up, you've done this, you've done that, you've done that. You'll never win. And even if we catch a full okay. manifestation of a ghost on camera, <laughs> you won't get everybody believing yeah, that it's real. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. we just go out for the crack, really. We start going out for the crack. There was a period of time where <clears throat> I tried to put too much emphasis on um, planning the recordings and everything like that, didn't I? We wanted yeah. it to look nice, didn't we? we want so it, yeah, we wanted we... it to be quite cinematic and, you know, really atmospheric and everything like that. And it sort of, it took away our, like, just two mates going out for a crack, having a ghost hunt sort of thing, you know? Um, mm. But I just, after hearing you talking about all this, it's it sort of put that fire in me again to yeah, go out yeah. and start investigating again, you know? Well, you must do. And, the, and because you two are great mates... The more you do, seriously now, and, and, and there was actually a controlled experiment 
that was done, and I've forgotten what it was called now, forgive me, but they actually had a group of people, I think there were six people, and they lived together in this house, and every day they did a seance. They did contact with the other side every day, every day, every day, every day. And the more they did, the more phenomena it grew. It got yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger. So you, t and also I always say this, if you have a great relationship with whomever you're doing a ghost investigation with, if you're close, you'll get more phenomena. You mm. feed off each other, your energy and your vibrations, what we were talking about earlier on. Part of me though, don't want to fucking know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to hear it. I don't uh, you'll be in sync and then you're pushing out this fabulous uh, yeah. energy and they will see that and go right okay well come on in then and we'll do what we'll do yeah. what they're asking us to do but it totally makes it totally makes sense of it because we've done we've done ones in a hotel before and tried like ben said try to make it all look swanky and nice you know b-roll and all the slow motion footage and all that and nothing really happened but then we went no, we went to the woods to, and we just had fun. We yeah. didn't plan anything. Yeah. We we're having a good laugh with each other. Energy was bouncing, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't and even. And loads of shit happened. All our yeah. equipment was yeah. going on. It wasn't on. even That's supposed to magic. be a haunted location. We just went to yeah. a random place in and the woods. Oh, I reckon you'll get some fantastic stuff. Yeah. And that's the thing. And when you, you, you're absolutely right. The more relaxed you are, the more stuff you'll get. Just go out with one camera. Yeah. Don't worry about any of that. Mm, and I yeah. bet you get some amazing yeah, stuff. Yeah. And don't you don't concentrate too much on all this techno stuff. Just use your eyes, your ears, your senses, your gut. Mm. You'll get some amazing mm. phenomena. Yeah. We yeah, we brilliant. caught a really good EVP on the one in the woods. Oh, love, love oh yeah, yeah. Ben was asking questions because all our equipment was going off and then it stopped going off. Mm. And and then um, Ben just asked, he said, oh, are you tired? And you just hear an account. We didn't hear it at the time, but afterwards you can hear it answer and it says rest. He said, are you tired? And it just goes rest. Like that in it's the camera. The, I love that. The oh man, it makes my hair yeah. go up now. I love. <laughs> it's the only piece of, elect of, of, of technical equipment I love to use and that is the EVP. Mm. I love just just leaving a laptop in a room, yeah. coming back, and we've caught some amazing, amazing sounds. Wow. But as for all the other stuff, um, you know, all the other gizmos and gadgets and all the rest of it, leave those at home and just but go they, out yourself. But they, get, they, but work they are you good. Up. They they, work they, you yeah, up. When, when I hear them go off and stuff, I'm sort of like, oh, sh you know. Yeah. And again, when you're when you're making a YouTube video, as you know about production and stuff. You know the the watchers like to see and hear things sparking off. You know it's not yeah, they, can, they, they they can't yeah. see a gut feeling from me uh, unless yeah. I vocally say I've got this gut feeling something's going on. Mm. You know. Yeah, but yeah, but they will. They, they, I know what you're saying, but <clears throat> trust me when I tell you, when shit starts to kick off, it, it's so entertaining to see two men in a wood. <laughs> running around shitting oh, myself no, one minute, you know, <laughs> one minute i can imagine mace go you know going what the hell was that what the hell was that yeah and then you might say something fun you know it's light and shade but and we do wind each other up a bit you should watch yeah. some of you our, should you watch, should watch some of ours you know you you will, you will chuckle he threw but a log yeah. once all our equipment was going off and he sent me down this track into the darkest dankest wood you've ever seen and as I'm walking down there, I heard a whisper, and then he just decides to throw a log. <laughs> throw oh, log. you bugger. Yeah, yeah. I jumped a mile. I, I, I couldn't have that. Do you know what, though? Yeah, I, I always get him with the northern thing. I always get him with a fart. So whenever oh, we're yeah. doing a ghost hunt, I always pretend. I always... The best one was in Bodmin Jail when you did that. Yeah. yeah. But look, I want to talk to you about your book as well, because you just yeah. you just released your book, your second book, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, the Ripper of Whitechapel. Yes, that was about what on the thirtieth, I think you released it. Let me show the camera. Well, yeah, yeah, 20, yeah. 29. Um, so this is the second book in the series called the Ghost Hunter Chronicles. The first book's called The House in the Woods, and this book, The Ripper of Whitechapel, was out on the 29th of this of, of September, and. Um, uh, yeah, it's done. It's done really well already. I think it's number one on Amazon for ghost stories for young adults. Amazing! Um, so that's wow. Um, um, and excuse, yeah. the, excuse the pun, but what a chapter of your life, eh? Hey. I mean, what? But honestly, I mean, what made you? It's such a, a good idea. A, a bit of a stupid question, but what made you get into? I mean, just hearing you talk, you know, you. I can hear. 
I can sense that you're a great storyteller. You know, is that part of it? Have you always been wanting to you know, tell stories and that's why you wanted to write some books? I mean, what what inspired you to write these books? Um, none of that. No? Funny enough. Because no, it was, do you remember at the beginning we talked about most haunted experience and we did um, junior ghost hunts and I had, uh, like for under 16s, and we did a couple of those, which was fantastic. Got to meet all these young adults and these young ghost hunters who are yeah. really, I mean, God, I couldn't believe how many kids are into the paranormal and ghost hunting. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was chatting to them, spent a day with them. It was wonderful. And, um, and a couple of them said, you know, are you ever going, will you write a scary book? And I was like, what? And I said, really? I said, would you want to read a scary book? And they said, yes. Yeah. From you, said, yes. Okay, right, that's put the idea into my head. And then I started thinking about it some more. And I thought, well, what if I started writing a book, um, you know, a fictional book, and use some of my own experiences mm. and put them in the book? Yeah. You know, like the, the, the three protagonists, Eve, Tom and Clovis, the three 13-year-olds, you know, as if it was happening to them, as if they experienced it. And that's exactly what I did. And I remember when I first started reading it, uh, writing it, I was in a bookshop and uh, there was a mum there and she had two two teenage sons with her, about 13. And I said, is there any way I can sit down and have a chat with you all? And they looked at me like, who's this strange woman? <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah. and like, they, were, they were looking at, I think it was Skullduggery Pleasants and some spooky kind of books. So I was yeah. thinking, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I said, I'm writing a, 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 a paranormal book all about ghosts. I said, can I just ask you, how scary would you like it to be? And then one of the lads just went, the scarier the better. He said, I love to shake when I read a book. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? Right, you should have okay, said, you want to come out on a ghost hunt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get scratched so up. I, uh, yeah. So, oh, God. So I, I spoke to my publisher and I said, look, you know, how scary do I make this? And the first book, uh, I think I went a bit over the top because they they they, this, uh, they made me rewrite the last half of the first book and went just pull it back a yeah. little bit. just pull it back a little bit which I did and then um, and they're fantastic because when I wrote the Ripper of Whitechapel they were like uh, yeah no it's, it's all good I kept sort of saying is this okay is this, you know I had yeah. to be really sensitive about you know Jack the Ripper and stuff because yeah. his murders were brutal and mm. but I'd always found you know, that that wonderful Victorian image of the Victorian streets in East London, yeah. you know, the white, you know, Whitechapel area, there's cobbled the dirty streets. the steam and the smoke. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the top hat, the cloak, yes. the bag, all yeah. of that. Yeah, So I just thought, no, that's what I'm going to... And I've finished the third book in the series. At the moment, it's called The Rise of the Pendle Witches. Oh. And I'm using my experiences from when I investigated Pendle Hill um, which was a very traumatic experience, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, so I've finished that one. So that's ready to go already for next year. I, and, bet, it was uh, a, I, I bet it was an absolute buzz when your book got released and you started seeing the sales. I and cried. People enjoy oh, I cried. Yeah, I I like, bet. Oh, my God. And then the Barnaby Edwards, who does a lot of the Doctor Who audio books, has just done the audio books for both both of them. And I'm like, oh, and really? Me and, Kyle, oh, yeah, wow. me and Kyle were like listening, going, Oh my god! Oh my yeah. god! They're my words. I thought of those. They're my yeah. words. Oh my god! Amazing. Because so, yeah, so uh, was I, it this one that George Lucas said I was too uh, too uh, scared to, to to read, or was that your yeah. first one? Matt Lucas. Ma nice uh, George, George Lucas. Yeah, Matt Lucas. Matt sorry, George Lucas. <laughs> I prefer Matt Lucas. Matt Lucas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. Yeah, Matt Lucas. Yeah, de yeah, lovely. Just really lovely, lovely people. Just saying nice things about the book, which is great. When you when you first um, decided to write a book, because, I mean, I don't know anything about the, how to go about starting a book. So uh, obviously you get it proofread and things like that, right? And it goes through different stages. So if you're, which I'm, I'm not assuming this at all, but if, you're, um, if you're, your writing skills and your English isn't, it isn't great, I suppose that's what the proofreader does. And is it sort of yeah. like 99% yours, but then they say, like, let's just change this a little bit. I mean, what, what's, what gets involved with writing a book, you know? Yeah. Is it a long but, process? Yeah, it is really. So you'll, you'll be given a time schedule from your editor and they'll say, right, okay, you've got so many months, say six months to write this book. Right. And we need it to be, let's say, at least 60,000 words. 
um, and off you go. And uh, they'll have a couple of meetings with you and say, right, what's the idea? What, what, what sort of, where are you thinking of going with this story? So in your mind, you've already got the kind of the basic story arc of, of where it's going. Right. And then you spend those six months just writing, writing it out, getting it down and then the nerve crunching bit comes when you you do all your spell check and you make yeah. sure it all looks good and then you send it to your publisher and you're like oh my god yeah. what if they hate it what if they yeah hate it? that must be so nerve-wracking because yeah. there's rules I, right there's rules yeah. of how to write stories and sentences and paragraphs and all that how it all sort of blends in together and formulates the story well not so much for me i don't think i think i've just i just write it and i yeah. think that you know um, works, fortunately, I, you know, I know how to do a, you know, your paragraphs and you get all of that. Yeah. Um, and so it gets sent off and then um, they will then come back with, right, I've got I've got some edits um, and they'll bring up some points. So that all along the side of your work, they will put like points yeah. or questions. Why have you got this person doing this when this is da, da, da? I would get rid of this. Oh, and okay. Then, this is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. So that's, yeah. So they'll make all the suggestions and you right. you don't have to agree to it, but you can, you can actually, uh, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Fine. I'll cut that and I'll do that. And then that's what happens with you. So you get your first edit, which I've got on my Pendle Witches. And then I'll have like, uh, I've got the whole of November to rewrite all of her notes, mm -hmm. then send it back. Then she'll come back with another second edit, perhaps yeah. of more suggestions or cut here, cut there. Then once we're both happy with it, then it goes to like um, a proofreader. So they'll go through everything, all the mistakes um, or, or things like um, you've got here in chapter one that um, that Clovis likes cookies, but in chapter two you said you, it says he likes uh, his favorite food is sausages. Wow. Yeah, yeah, just really little things wow. like that. Yeah, yeah. All all marries together. <laughs> oh my God. And so there's about yeah three or four people that will look through the manuscript to make sure that it, it it's all right, and then that's it. When it when it's done, it's done. Wow. And then it's, See, oh my it's... God, the next time I see it. it will be in book form yeah and, and who does the design for the front covers and stuff like that then yeah it's brilliant and that's that's the publishers and, and again i cried when that came through the it's post amazing. i was like oh my god it looks like a i love the feel poster. of books you know that's the thing i love because yeah. you can get like you know the ebooks and things like that but these i love the feel of books they're great aren't they you know yeah they are lovely and in the back of the books i write about um you know the paranormal activity and the story how they marry together so my own personal experience and what happens in the book but how i talk about the reality of it in in in, in the back of each book as well so in oh, each right. book there will be it's based on truth my kid jack will love to read that as well yeah definitely you, you got one as well yeah thanks for that yeah it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> i was gonna, I was gonna keep also, them both i was gonna i, I did I, I did want them signed but I couldn't get them signed. No, I'm well, upset oh, about that. When you go to 30 East Drive, maybe your vet can get the ghost to sign it for you. Yeah, probably. It would probably be very rude, ghost. It's not very nice there, is it? Yeah, but you need to get book one as well, because then it continues. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But see, it's strange, because I thought that it would be something that you would just write in your own time, and then you would say, hey, you, you would go to someone and say, hey, I've got this book. Can you read it? Can we, you know? And so, I didn't know it would be a timeline like a, a, a time period of when you had to start and finish. That's a lot yeah. of pressure. Do you ever have like writer's block? Oh God, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, awful. So I'll go, oh God, I can't, I, I can't, I'm getting so frustrated. It's not going right. So I'll go for a walk with the dog yeah. and then I'll come back. And then uh, when I was writing the end of the, the second half of the Pendle Witches one, I uh, my computer crashed and I lost half the book. Oh, shit. And oh my God, I cried. I was shaking. Oh, I was desperately trying to get all the work back on the computer and rebooting it and trying to do all sorts of stuff. And I lost it all. Oh, but no. it, was a, it, it was a positive thing because it made me rewrite it in a better way. Oh, okay. Uh, and yeah, I'd overcomplicated it and I'd put too many characters in. Right. And it was almost like somebody up there was going, no. And and it, my computer it. just you now with your computer it goes low battery and it gives you a warning. Yeah. Well, it, for no reason the whole thing just went boom. Wow. And it, hey. it, it, there was no reason. Anyway, I rewrote it and it was ten times better. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. That's Maybe good. Maybe that was the spirits yeah. looking after yeah. you a bit of your shot. Yeah. Good, good job I you didn't save it to the cloud, didn't it? 
Hey, oh God. <laughs> talk to me out of the bloody cloud. I don't even know what the bloody thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why you lost all your work. <laughs> I am such a, I am so useless. I'm amazed. I was, that's what I'm saying. When we first joined here, I, I didn't know to click what button to click. I'm absolutely useless. One of my favorite films, and it was also originally a book, um, is The Misery, Stephen King's The, the Misery. Have you ever seen that film? <gasps> Oh God, yes, only once. Brilliant. I couldn't bear to watch it again when she smashed <laughs> the, the famous feet with her feet yeah. in the. Hideous. Oh, yeah. I'll get you your I'm goddamn just... paper. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You've been out of was... bed again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so good. Well, listen, we've taken up far too much of your time. I appreciate it so much. It's so, it's amazing. It's like it is absolutely surreal that we're actually sitting here talking. I'm still not over it. I yeah, still I yeah. still can't believe it. Well, listen, any time that you're up at, where are you? Are you down south? Are you in Cornwall? Cornwall Newquay, yeah. Newquay in Cornwall. Come. Oh my God, we've got a house in Devon and we, we've just put it on the market and we're looking for a house in Cornwall. Come and see oh, us. Oh, we've got to, yeah. Oh, we've got to do something. Yeah. We've got to go oh, on a, a hunt or... Oh, well, there's Bristol, isn't it? SS Great Britain. Oh, that was a goodie. That was a great one. Why don't you come on a Most Haunted Experience and we can do a little filming beforehand? Love yeah. To. Love to. Definitely. That would be well, great. Because um, we could do one, it won't be for a wee while yet, but... When we're next down in Devon or Cornwall, we'll let you know, and then we'll tie it in with the most haunted experience. Because yes. I know we do them on SS Great Britain, which is fan absolutely fantastic. Oh, man, okay. That would be great fun. Well, we're in contact with Twitter, and that's we'll keep in contact. We're already yeah, something. Yeah, please do. Is there, yeah, a, is there any sort of social links or your YouTube channel that you want to you know shout out before we go or anything like that? Uh, no, I, only, I'll put it all uh, in there. I'll put it all in the description yeah, anyway. Well, anybody that fancies, you know, what we were talking about before, um, Most Haunted is real. We love what we do. It's a real investigation. Um, and if you would like to come and uh, see for yourselves, then go to www.mosthaunted.com, mosthauntedexperience.com, <laughs> and have a look at all the different locations that you can join on. And you can see which ones that I'm on and Carl's on and Stuart's on and the Most Haunted team. And come and join in and see for yourself that what we do is real. Excellent. Love to. Well, awesome. stay stay on a minute because we're just going to say goodbye, but then um, stop recording. We'll just say our, our proper. Okay. I say our proper goodbyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. Th thanks a bit. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so Thank much. You a pleasure. I love, 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 love you guys. Thank you. <laughs>